Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. Welcome back to part two of Lana versus Lynn, for the record. Keeping it real, basically, with lots of receipts. Receipts for hours. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> come on in. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. So for those of you who, well, for everybody, for everybody's benefit, um, I had a stream yesterday and during that stream, some, uh, music was played. I think it was Michael Jackson. Yes, I'm sure it was Michael Jackson, uh, in one of the clips that was, uh, made the entire video blocked for certain countries. <laughs> uh, welcome, everybody. Welcome. So <clears throat> I, so it was blocked. So I had to go and take that music out. And when I took the music out, um, not only did it disable the chat, so unfortunately you can't see the chat, but you can hear me reacting to the chat. So, you know, you have a general idea of what's being said in the chat. Come on in, everybody. Remember to hit that thumbs up. Thank you very much. Um, so not only did it do that, but <laughs> for those of you who have experience with the YouTube editor, it's not very good. And it's the only thing you're allowed to use after a video is posted or live. Um, and if you, <laughs> and so... I went in and plugged in the very specific timestamps for it to cut out and it cut out several more minutes and there's, uh, and there's no way for me to get it back. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do tonight, and I was going to do this anyway for anybody who wasn't here yesterday or for anybody who just wanted a brief recap of uh, what we went through and uh, you know where we left off. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do a very, very brief recap of where we left off, but I'm going to fill in a little bit more on the, in the area that got completely cut out because of the music, because this, there's this one part that is really important to the overall story that didn't stay in. And it's kind of confusing <laughs> to go, to go from one part to the other without this bit of context. So, um, so we're going to do that. And um, I also want to acknowledge that I did receive uh, some donations from uh, in PayPal and Cash App, and I don't want to dox those people that did that, but thank you very much. It is very much appreciated. This stream is not monetized. I also don't have memberships on this channel. Later on, I'll share um, some pay links and stuff, but um, uh, if you want to, you know, sh show some appreciation, you're you're welcome to do it that way, or you know, however the YouTube allows you to do it. But I don't have memberships on this channel. Hello, 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 welcome in. So I'm going to grab my presentation. Hold on. And just as a reminder, uh, for those of you who, um, I don't know, it's just a good reminder anyway, everyone's welcome here with a few exceptions. Those who are not welcome are blocked. Um, and they know why. <laughs> and um, also, uh, but everyone is welcome here. I suspect there will be people from a lot of different, you know, factions of true crime and crama here. Everyone is welcome here as long as you're respectful. And as long as you don't try to uh, pick up your gripes against other people in my chat, that my chat is not the place to do it. I'm not going to allow it. We're going to stick to what's being talked about in this stream. This stream is about me and Lana. And uh, this is probably going to be the only time you hear me sit here for this length of time and talk about this topic because I'm honestly more interested in how uh, true crime victims are being treated by her and people like her. 
So, um, yeah, Vanessa, and you know what? There's a lot that I hadn't seen before. <laughs> I hadn't seen it before either. There's, you know, a few things that I was actually surprised to come across that I didn't even notice before. So I suspect that happens to a lot of people. And hey, Luann, it's been a long time since I've seen you. I hope you're well. Um, so that's how Lana works, though. She loves putting those Easter eggs in that she knows only a certain few people or even one person will get, even if they notice it. Why do that? It's so, uh, I, I don't, I, I don't understand the thinking behind it. I, I could try to explain it, but it's, it, you have to get pretty far into the head of an individual like that to, tr to try to understand why it's so important to get people's attention that you keep saying that are harassing you <laughs> and menacing you, right? She thinks she's Taylor Swift. That's funny. So, all right, I'm going to, um, we just hold on one moment. So I'm going to move it through this first part real quickly, real quickly, just so that you guys can get a recap. Uh, everybody can get a recap and I can fill in. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, God bless you. Um, and Jesus bless you too. So anyway, um, I'm going to go real quickly through this and then I'm just going to um, expand on one part that got cut out when I cut out the music and it cut out and the YouTube editor cut out too much. So as I said before, um, I, th the reason I have all this information is because I was threatened legally and I started documenting and the way everything started was because, um, it was in February of 2021 and we, uh, and Lana was on JS for justice and she was talking about fight for a family and she, you know, that's where we started to see, a, uh, you know, uh, evidence of Shazam coming out. And things like that. So at the same time she's announcing Fight for a Family, we see evidence of Shazam and, you know, the fact that she's dressing up like Shanann Watts as a corpse filter and making fun of her. So, so we start seeing those. And then um, I showed uh, uh, some clippings and samplings. We also start finding out that she's been um, caught <laughs> demanding that people turn in their IDs in order to join her uh, Facebook group. And then somehow those IDs end up on the internet, you know, but they wouldn't have ended up on the internet in the first place. Welcome to everybody coming in. They wouldn't have ended up on the internet in the first place if she hadn't requested them and put them all in her, you know, in her photo file and whatever. So, um, we also are, things are surfacing, like she sent a Valentine's Day card to Chris Watts in prison from his, uh, the toddlers that he has confessed to murdering. There's something really weird and twisted about that. Okay. And so <laughs> that's when, you know, March 1st, 2021, I posted a video and I was like, sorry, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying this whole fight for family thing. I made some criticism. I doxed her dad. When I say docs, that docs means I showed his Facebook uh, profile picture. And um, I talked about a bankruptcy judgment against uh, her and her father. <laughs> okay. And, you know, to tie that into how can somebody with a bankruptcy judgment um, <laughs> start a nonprofit? <laughs> okay. So, uh, you know, how can we trust this person? How can we trust this person? I've said many times, I wouldn't go about it the same way. I was new to YouTube. I wouldn't go about it the same way. I wouldn't have talked about her dad, but that um, evidence of her dad on my videos has been erased for a very, very, very long time. It set off a chain of retaliation that will, <laughs> uh, that still hasn't ended in all, in all honesty. It ebbs and flows, but it hasn't really ended. Okay. So, um, this is just funny that maybe or maybe not Jonathan Lee Riches threatened to uh, sue me for defamation on behalf of Lana. <laughs> and I kept publishing videos and, and then 
um, at a certain point, and, and also she's um, promoting Jamie's journal and all this stuff, and that 5-4 family is a 501c3, and I'm sitting here going, oh, no, no, you, that's not something you can do. I know what it takes to uh, promote a legitimate nonprofit because I've been part of one. You can't do that. And then I made, um, and then I noticed that there's trouble in paradise because her and Jay is for justice, have a breakup after a trip to Denver. And then Lena launched her channel and she started promoting fight for her family, but she was super shady about her connection with the Watts and she wouldn't answer questions, uh, that were very, you know, <laughs> legitimate questions that anybody should be able to answer very easily. So that caused a lot of question. And then um, I made a comment on her channel and she, one of her responses to me was, like I said, you came over here sniffing my panties and everyone will see that. And then she kept saying stuff like that, like thirsty and true crime and bring your thirsty booty on over. And I said, you're disgusting. <laughs> that what you're saying could constitute sexual harassment, professional my ass. So that's where, uh, that's where our interaction began, right? That's where our, our interaction began. Welcome to the people coming in. Thank you. I'm just going through a brief recap of, of what we talked about yesterday so that we could go on with part two. So um, this, is, this isn't super important. It's just to say <laughs> that I just debunked this, basically. Everything I just said debunks everything that is said in this screenshot. And um, I... Every, basically everything here is debunking what has been what I've been accused of. Um, I joined as Deborah Bix and she, she uh, tried to type Deborah Bix into the chat or something and it auto-corrected to Debris. That's why she calls me Debris. Uh, I joined the site to see if there were um, any of the stuff that she was promoting was in there. It wasn't, of course. We had a little back and forth about all of this. And, you know, this is her telling the version of it, but I'm not going to tell that. So this is the, um, welcome everybody. Thank you very much. I appreciate that Tia, Tia Dash. Um, so this is, this is kind of an important part because this is kind of very contextual because, um, this is where in one of my videos, I take the time to explain um, why the things that she's saying to me are particularly triggering. Now, I don't expect people to know that. I don't expect people to know that. What I do expect is that when you tell somebody, hey, uh, that specific thing you're saying is a specific trigger, right? That um, they would just take note of it and maybe stay away from that if they are a humane type of person. But what I didn't realize is I was dealing from uh, dealing with an anti-humane person, right? I was dealing with somebody who would do the opposite of what I thought they would do, which was to take that information and decide to use it <laughs> uh, to hurt me, not understanding that that is the thing that caused that thing that caused me the mental illness that I have today. That mental illness is a disability. So when you make fun of my mental illness and you take pot shots at it and you blame me for it and you say ignorant, disparaging things about it, you are that that's called what's that what's that word called? That well, that's just straight up harassment. <laughs> that's I mean, that's just all it is. It's, it's complete harassment. And you were, and because Lana is so, I see now today, looking back on things, um, you know, I see now today that Lana is so hyper-focused on sex that the fact that my mental illness had to do with um, sex abuse really just, uh, what is it? It, it, it interested her in a way that was unhealthy. I mean, that's the nicest way to see it. That's the nicest way to see it. Okay. So I'm just going to play this because this is the part that got erased when I had to erase the music out of my last video. And um, it's just a, kind of an important part of the story. All right. I'm going to get a little bit serious with you right now. 
people who have childhood trauma like I do and who were abused by people they trusted, um, when they are not expecting to hear a lot of sexuality, especially pointed right at them uh, in a true crime setting or in a non-sexual setting, uh, it creates an instant flashback. So when you said to me, um, I'm kind of looking at back at this and chuckling, thinking, oh, you silly, silly girl, giving somebody the benefit of the doubt that they would, that this would be helpful information for them, helpful to them, that they would learn from this. It's a different kind of learning when all you do is take, use information as a weapon, right? you're just coming over here to sniff your panties. I instantly had a flashback because my sexual abuse involved my underwear. And also when you said something about me, um, my, it, it's actually starting to come up right now. It makes me feel physically ill, ill when that stuff comes up. When you said, <clears throat> that my uh, thirsty booty wanted you or something like that. So some of my abuse involved my butt. And I'm not looking for sympathy here. I'm not. I'm trying to help you explain to you that you have no idea what people have gone through in their lives. And hearing stuff, what, what you're doing is intentionally, intentionally trying to disarm somebody when you are feeling. So you get the picture. I explained it. I gave the benefit of the doubt. I'm trying to help them understand why that's not cool to do on the internet. To anybody. Not just me. To anybody. Okay? So I said that. And um, and that's where we got to this, to this part that I can't play now because it would also d uh, disable this, uh, block this stream. So um, then, you know, she comes under fire and she's, you know, on people's channels and she dodges questions. And then the sex scandal happens, ba 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 boom. And she, after this sex scandal, and you guys know about the sex scandal, um, a huge retaliation begins. Lana just goes on a retaliation binge that she's in many ways still on and she would still be on it if the courts hadn't stopped her by now because she's lost all but one uh suit and you know like i said before if you have to win by cheating you should <laughs> if you can only win by cheating you should fucking get out of the game but uh, i don't know if she'll ever learn so then we start going kind of with the back and forth she and i are doing a back and forth i see her releasing someone's legs wide open on a stream. I get it taken down. Um, then she starts denying that I got it taken down. And, um, you know, I'm showing proof here that she does this on a regular basis. Okay. While her enablers are like, Lana wouldn't do such a thing. Lynn is just crazy. And she's such a liar. Yeah. Fuck you. So, um, then she struck me and I started, uh, posting on insomnia and true crime, uh, you know, everybody starts their backup channel. Um, uh, a lot of people start their backup channel when they're struck twice in a row. Right. Uh, <laughs> I did try hard, didn't I? Sparkles. <laughs> I tried. I always try, you know, I like giving people the benefit. I do. I like giving them the benefit of the doubt and I will keep saying, giving them the benefit of the doubt until they stop 
earning it or, you know, until they, until they flush it down the toilet, like she has many times. So then I played her, uh, her, her threats. So now she, at this point, she's really getting threatened. And so she threats and she intimidates and, you know, um, we go back and forth and she says, see you in court. So I start documenting and that's why I have all this documentation. That's all there is to it. <laughs> Nobody's monitoring anyone. I am documenting, documenting. And so <laughs> that's how I have all this stuff. And that's why I know that um, any court action she could bring against me would be completely futile. And it was. I learned around this time that she's in a chat called, or owns a chat, not sure, called Debris Murder Friends. I don't think we can assume that there were good intentions with Debris Murder Friends, right? Um, then she starts her bachelorette party and I put up a prenup and she just get, gets sicker and sicker and puts up these kinds of things. And we're getting closer and closer. You know, these are all videos of her talking about our wedding and um, putting up her cash app and starting a GoFundMe because it is a real, it is a real bachelorette party weekend where she really does need the money, but it's not a real wedding. So it's all a pretext for her to A, raise money and B, push down on my childhood sex abuse with, you know, all kinds of, all kinds of bullshit sex talk, right? Especially about my panties. So, and roping other people into it and everything. So this is, this is, there's an intense amount of this happening in real time, an intense amount of this hours and hours and hours of video. And she never makes it transparent what she's going to be talking about that day. So if you're going to document, you have to sit there and watch and make sure. And it's, uh, it's, it's demoralizing and it's sad and it's, and it's a good thing that I don't, document her anymore. <laughs> I've, I'm back to just checking to see when she is once again um, exploiting a true crime victim in her favor. So more of these types of uh, thumbnails and then she does debris everywhere, uncovering the unhinged and she promotes it, talks about it being lit as a tit. She does this two and a half hour stream of you know laughing at me and my child sex abuse and my mental illness and, you know, above and beyond it being just a, <laughs> a display of a terrible human being. It's a display of a, of someone who is, uh, has absolutely no business being taken seriously as a true crime streamer. Okay. Who has a, a nonprofit president, um, status. I mean, you, you know, when you're running a nonprofit, Hello to everyone coming in. Just uh, don't mind me if I don't say hello. Um, it's just that I'm kind of running through this. I want to get through quickly so that we could get to part two. But also, yes, please remember, remember to hit the thumbs up. Thank you very much. So she plays this two and a half. And you, I don't know how anybody could look at the fact that she's played this, this live stream now three different times on her channel. And look at that and say, oh, yeah, I want to get my true crime information from her. <laughs> that just shows you. And this is my bigger um, my bigger issue here is that YouTube and social media and the Internet, it uh, fosters this um, cult of personality rather than, you know, facts. Right. You get more attention if you make shit up about people, about other people. And that is what she had, how she has grown her channel is by making shit up about people who are trending. Seriously, making shit up about people who are trending on YouTube in true crime. Yes, uh, Kona Bologna, that, the backsplash on my presentation and on my stream tonight is um, the cancellation from the state of Ohio of her nonprofit. It's nothing. There's not even a website anymore. There hasn't been a website for a while. She talks about that. So then I started getting, um, you know, harassing accounts like this, talking to me, 
joining her channel. She, <laughs> all kinds of weird stuff is going on. Um, these, the, this account comes on, comes up and starts saying really fucked up things to me while I'm on Natasha's panel, really fucked up things. And then, um, oops. And then we catch her drinking and driving and she tries to convince us that it's, uh, <laughs> she tries to convince us that it's Capri Sun in the wine bottle that she would drive around with a wine bottle with, a, with a wine box with Capri Sun in it. Hey, pull me over, pull me over. So I can just show you it's Capri Sun. Right. Right. She does still advertise it on her page. She's still sells her highest tier membership. Um, donation, a nonprofit that does not exist is not uh, sanctioned to exist in Ohio. Okay. So then, um, this is the part that was kind of shocking to me is that I find out that she has put a private photo of me that is only accessible in certain ways. Um, in one of her fucked up Shazam trailers in August of 2021. So, you know, she's reviving Shazam well after she says that she has a and prostrated herself in front of the community but she keeps reviving shazam and doing fucked up things like this easter egging my uh my makeup face in her in her in her fucking video all right so that's creepy as fuck it's creepy as fuck to find your face in a video of somebody that you know is fixated on you i've never I don't, I, I don't go creeping around finding, um, trying to look for photos of Lana um, to Easter egg into my fucked up videos. <laughs> it's, I mean, it, it's fucking demented, you guys. So um, as we get close to, uh, you know, closer to the end of the year in 2021, um, she gets more and more reactive and I keep, I'm, I'm acknowledging here that I contributed to, I, I understand being provoked about the things I'm saying. This is the whole eviction incident. I'm not going to go through that. It's all in my first stream, but basically she almost got her client evicted and then pretended that the thing that um, we just saw happen didn't happen. And, um, <laughs> And then blames me and uh, for de defamation, saying that I uh, that I caused her client to get evicted. Right? Um, no. Um, yeah. And then she, you know, these are all just more uh, examples of her constant doxing of my name. She, you know, it was it was really horrible in her mind that I said her dad's name and that I showed his um, profile picture. Um, it's no longer on the internet. It's no longer anywhere to be found. And um, I, and I have personally and publicly apologized for doing that and said, I wouldn't do it that way again. But um, since she knows that that's something you really shouldn't do unless you're really trying to irritate somebody, get under somebody's skin. She does it to me all the time. So much so that I um, had to spend, you know, probably about an eighth a period of time. It was, it was the plastic red carpet's fault. Exactly. Um, I, like about an eighth of my time uh, editing those videos was redacting my name. Right. So <laughs> She never has to redact anything out of my videos about her. She wishes she could so she could redact all the all the proof I'm showing. So anyway, I show how I made <laughs> I, I said something kind of crude in this video that I cringe over and um, I asked for civility and she just pay, basically keeps uh, and this is where we ended up. So where we ended up yesterday on part one was I basically asked for, <laughs> I posted a video requesting civility and I ugly cried. And man, when we got to that part, I was so tired. I didn't realize how tired I was. And um, 
you know, it wasn't like a feel sorry for me tired. It was a just uh, spent, just exhausted, just exhausted from just, you know, processing all this stuff again and talking about it. Um, but I'm fine. I'm not trying to, again, I'm totally, totally, totally fine. I just do want to get um, the rest of the way through this today. So, and this is where things really, really start to pick up. Okay. Um, and, you know, in my assessment, what's happening here is she's done a bunch of things. She's done a bunch, a bunch of things. Yes, please remember to hit the like button. Um, she's done a bunch of things to try to silence me and it's not working, right? She figures that if I, that if she goes on and, and humiliates me for, two, for, you know, over a couple hours with a bunch of people there cheering her on, that's going to silence me. It didn't silence me. It didn't silence me. Um, she thought that all, you know, all the other stuff was going to silence me that I'd stop talking about her. That didn't silence me. So she's getting more and more, um, urgent about silencing me somehow. And so she keeps threatening more. She's, she's being more and more threatening about the lawsuits. And, um, on November 8th, she goes live and she reads parts of a legal complaint. Hello, Andy Candy. Yes, we are live. Um, she goes live. She talks about this and then she, and then she, um, has a, she says she has, and this is something that I didn't catch before either until I was doing research for this video in this video on November 8th. She says she has a captain machine gun right here. Now, she wasn't being like, she wasn't being ha 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 jokey. She, she wasn't being like, ha 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 ha. She could have been talking about the Nerf gun that she shot when she said, you know, um, making my plans, you know, uh, practice in my aim. And she pointed a, a Nerf machine gun. Maybe she's talking about that. But why would she say that? Why? In the midst of this video where she's talking about, you know, she's threatening a lot of people with lawsuits, but most particularly me. So what I did was I, um, yeah, thank you, Jesus, take the screenshot. I agree with you. Um, so <laughs> Jesus, take the screenshot. <laughs> Sorry, it's just <laughs> Jesus, take the screenshot. <laughs> I'm sorry. Everything's a song to me. Oh, my God. Lie down, Steve. Oh, boy. He's getting needy. He's get... it's, uh, it's been wet here today, so I haven't been able to take him on as, as much of a walk. <laughs> anyway, okay. Sorry, I'm a little bit distracted by my cute doggy right now. All right, so <laughs> Chris, Chris is inexplicably craving Capri Sun. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I'll stop saying Capri Sun. Maybe I should get Capri Sun to sponsor this stream. <laughs> yeah. So she. So I mean, this is again. I didn't notice that she had referenced guns until I started doing research for this stream. Why, you guys? Why? So let's let's take a listen. And um and I might scroll through some of it, but I also don't want to miss that part where she talks about the gun. So people that might not know, um a lot of people have been bullied, uh, been made fun of, uh, been talked about by uh, Natasha Cooper. Uh, this has been something that she's done for, for years. And due to my involvement with the Watts family um, and the 35C efforts and then my nonprofit, Natasha Cooper, and then this woman, uh, 
that called herself trauma and true crime uh, came after and was like attacking my nonprofit, me as a person, doxing me, my dad, stuff like that. So here we go. I want you guys to take a look at something. Uh, we're going to bring the receipts. Uh, what you guys are looking at is this is what it looks like when you are a channel uh, host, if, when you own a channel and you're with YouTube. And the only way that this is going to make any sense to people is I want you to see the warning explicit. Um, and then next to it says that that channel creator trauma and true crime you see that that's me request so yeah uh that date june 7th okay i'm gonna bring that back up here in a second um but i had copy struck her on as a reminder june 7th is also the day she showed nudity on her channel in revenge after threatening it. Okay, moving on. June 7th. And the only way that you're gonna be able to understand this is I'm going to play here a clip of what Lynn had said that is just completely not true, Lynn. <clears throat> and she's using this insomnia channel um, to gaslight and try to spin a narrative so okay once again warning explicit okay trauma and true crime june 7th 2021 resolved the video was removed she was copyright she was struck by me okay um and that was june you know what I'm going to do uh, with the with these videos? Because a lot of you were, I noticed that a lot of you were saying yesterday, um, oh my God, I can't take her voice. Her voice is so triggering. I'm going to put the playback speed higher <laughs> so that I'll put it on 1.25. So we get through this quicker and maybe it kind of offsets that triggering a little bit. Because <laughs> I do understand it. I do. I understand it. June 7th that I requested this to have happen against this video titled Warning. And it says, Warning, explicit, drawing a line under Oriani's offenses. Okay. And this was on her trauma and true crime channel. June 7th is when I asked for the submission of it being taken down. Okay. It does not mean that that's when she did that video. That's just when I submitted that video to be taken down. And it was, and she was struck. Okay. As you can see, I struck Ludovica Viviani. I was making efforts to try to get anything to do with that sex panel stuff taken down. Uh, that's what's up here. Um, but here we are, trauma and true crime, June 7th, attacking me, drawing a line under Oriani's offenses. And then when that, when she was struck on June 7th, okay, um, she, remember the, the, the panel was May 27th, all right? And I submitted a shit ton on, on June 7th, June 7th through 7th, June 8th, June 11th, or then it, then it was July 11th, July, July 11th. Because these people tried to chill out for like a month. Okay. And then what they did is Lynn took down all of her videos. Okay. So this is proof. All right. Lynn was using her trauma and true crime channel, trauma and true crime channel to make up lies about me when she was struck. Okay. June 7th, right here. She then deleted or privated, whatever you want to call it, whatever she chose to do, a bunch of videos. Okay. Now, let me tell you something. You don't get struck for nothing on YouTube. All right. You can do counters. You can do a bunch of different things. Um, the content that I was striking was it. So I put it up to 1.5 speed. Is that a good speed you guys, or should I slow it down a bit? Is it, is it kind of moving too fast? Just let me know. Let me know in the chat if I could slow it down a bit. It was between the 1802 minute mark and the 2306 minute mark. Okay. Now, unfortunately, there's no way for me to show you exactly what that content was. Okay. Because the video has been removed via YouTube. But I do have proof to show that she was using her trauma and true crime channel, okay? Unlike what she is claiming, me coming at her, okay, there is, she's never came. I've never come at her. I didn't know who she was, 
um, didn't know her channel existed. She knew who my dad was. She went on his Facebook. Um, so right here, June 7th. Now, let's listen to what Lynn has to say in this attempt at what she claims is peace. I want to emphasize what Faith is saying here. She acts like that strike is her big claim to fame. She, she celebrates when she gets over on other people. When she gets over on other people. It's like she gets, you, you, you see her glee and her happiness. I have this one clip. I'm, I forget whether I put it in this show. I, I, I'll try to see if I can show it later. I have this one clip of her absolutely going ape shit over getting access to a chat. Literally ape shit. Oh, the name of the sponsor isn't revealed as of yet. There's no fucking sponsor. Let's let's put a let's put a little bet down on that. I mean, it's honestly not that important to me, but I think I've never seen somebody future fake on that kind of shit so often. It's so funny. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, imagine that. I believe it's gone. Now you tell me where that video is. That we all that she just did um, on Friday night. And the video she's talking about is where I said, you know, let's have peace. And I ugly cried. <laughs> and then I, and then she went live and did something else. And I was like, fuck this shit. And I took it down. I mean, you know, she did something after that, you know, between my video and this video she's doing right here. I was like, fuck that bitch. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking that thing down. Um, you know, because she showed very much so that she, that she's not on board with peace. I'm like, all right, uh, gotcha. Gotcha, girl. It's nowhere to be found, guys. The video is nowhere to be found. So can somebody please explain to me who makes a video and then takes it down? Where's, where's this apology video and call and, and, and talking about this, this version pussy up oh, everything. All they do is delete everything. Um, so let's go back to, okay, once again. Um, Hear how pissed she is. Like this was her content plan. She had this content plan that she's just going to play my videos and then they're not there and she's pissed. And she's like, these people who delete videos. There are more deleted videos off of her channel than on her channel, probably. Right. I mean, can I get a what, what? <laughs> Why did you do something, Lynn? You deleted it. It's not even there. Okay. Well, I'm in the process of cutting, copying, cut, editing everything to, from my video that I did. on I can't remember if it was Saturday night. Um, and once I get to finishing editing it all, I have what Lynn said and I'll be able to play it. Okay. They're deleting everything. Why do you think that they're deleting everything? Because they think it's gonna go away and it's not. Share, so let's remove this. Let's go back to share. Uh, no, that's the thing. I came to YouTube knowing that every single thing I put on the internet will always be there for somebody to access, okay? So I knew, I, 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 I'm fully aware that anything I eventually delete could be brought up again. And you, you should expect that if you're a YouTuber. She, she Somehow she gets caught off guard by her, the very things that she says every day on her own channel. <laughs> yeah, she it is. She lies so blatantly. Oopsies. Share, share. Not that. Share. Again. <clears throat> for someone that's claiming that they don't want no problems, well, warning, explicit, warning, explicit. Drawing a line under Oriani's offenses, offenses. I don't have any offenses. I don't have a record. I have nothing on my record. I wasn't saying she had anything on the record. I was saying that she committed offenses on the internet that were over the line. Okay. And I was showing. I was showing evidence of that. And 
I showed a lot of evidence and that's why she hated it so much. And that's why she struck it. And I was, you know, fairly new to YouTube and didn't know what could be struck and what couldn't. And she was successful in striking it. Come on. I mean, whatever. As if that's a big win. Ooh, you struck a video. Ooh, ouchie. <laughs> this is what she made a title. Okay. Under her trauma and true crime channel. It was done before June 7th. It was just that I waited till June 7th because I did a double back-to-back -back, uh, struck of her channel. Yes, Brent. And she did an intentional back-to-back -back strike of my channel because, because she was trying to get my channel taken down. And that's been documented. I don't need to show it. And you're absolutely right. Um, they're doing this because this is why, because all these new people, okay? So go back to this, go like this. All these new people they are starting to, that have been brought over because of the Gabby Petito case to um, some, like to Lynn's channel, to Natasha's channel, all these people that have been brought over because of the Gabby Petito case, that's a reason they have to be deleting. And they think that none of this stuff is retrievable for any type of quote unquote uh, courtroom proceedings. And it's just, that's not true. Um, in fact, YouTube legal, they can get their hands on pretty much everything. They tell us as channel creators that things that get deleted, like you have like a three month period. Yeah, that's what they tell us. With a subpoena, it's everything. So <clears throat> Kiki, I was, am new, and I really want to know the truth. Well, I don't think that there should be. Just as a reminder, um, to anyone who starts feeling, you know, anxious on the verge of a panic attack, listening to this video, me playing her video, please do not feel the need to stay here. I have sped up her voice to make it a little bit more palatable. Um, but yeah, just wanted to say that. Be any questions right here with what the truth is? I don't, I don't delete videos. Um, I'm always answering to, uh, videos. But if you want to see Natasha Cooper uh, responding to people, you want to see Lynn responding to people and how they put, you know, six to 12 people on a panel to do this. They can never just handle like stuff themselves. Lynn has to pre-record, which is fine. If that's how she feels comfortable, pre-record all you want. Um, but pre-recording and editing oh, when you're you. crying in a video. So then you have to like come back on cue to like start crying again. That's oh, acting. Oh, 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 I forgot about that. She's just basically saying that I pre-recorded my video and therefore I came back crying. If I showed you that video, you would know I was not fake crying. So she might fake cry. She might fake cry when she needs to uh, try to get somebody's sympathy. I don't need to fake cry. I could cry at the drop of a hat, not, but it's for real. <laughs> Because um, my, <laughs> we are wired completely differently, okay? We are wired completely differently. Yes, I've always had a messy bun. My hair's long enough um, to, to throw it up there. You like that? <laughs> ah. Oh, it just snags them all with a messy bun. Um, Thank you, Tess Matt. So I saw a messy bun and I had to, I had to answer that. Squirrel. So getting back to this is I'm in the process of editing due to meet the YouTube standards of, you know, because I was playing music and videos and stuff like that. So I'm going to cut all that stuff out, trim it all up, and basically just focus on the first part of me talking about everything that Lynn did and, and pushing that um, and pushing that forward so that you guys can, you know, see that again. The only reason that it's not up there is because of me playing music. That's it. That's all. Um, and then I cut, copy them and get them back up there. So <clears throat> Boston missed me talking about Cincinnati is 9-0. We had game day. I, I was thinking it might be kind of fun to make to make this into like a mock mock trial where I like say <laughs> I like to queue up the different parts of the videos. I go, Lana Oriani, isn't it true that blah 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 objection bullshit? <laughs> <laughs> uh, first time ever at Cincinnati. 
on Saturday would need to be there. So getting back to uh, getting back to this whole point is that again, I didn't know who these people were. I didn't know who Lynn was. Lynn had doxed my dad. That's actually the video, uh, one of the strikes. Um, then she made a video in which I struck on June 7th and she'd used her trauma channel um, to do it. I mean, I mean her true crime channel, not her drama channel because that she didn't even have that yet. Um, Lynn was talking about God knows, you know, what, and, she, and the big thing is she never answered my question, which is this, Lynn, my only issues with you, because I don't, I don't have issues with you. You don't talk about true crime. You don't talk about cases. You sat on Natasha Cooper, Cooper's panel with the whole Gabby thing and basically live streamed the news and just sat there. Um, <laughs> I mean, looking, hearing her say this now, considering what she does now is absolutely hilarious. <laughs> it's hilarious. Objection. Facts, not in evidence. <laughs> um, you don't cover cases. And if you do, I don't know about them. And great. Go cover them however you damn well feel. But you did talk about me and you doubled down numerous times. And you said that I was a sexual predator and I had over 16 victims. And you keep repeating that and repeating this in chats. OK. And that's my issue. And you still have not addressed it. Um, there are no victims. Lynn, everybody knows this. You keep saying it. You have not yet addressed it ever on one of your pre-recorded lives that you want to do or pre-recorded episodes that aren't live or edited about 16 to 19 times. And doxing of my dad. And you claim that I came for you first. And when is this going to end? Well, it ends when you stop lying. And then the biggest thing that just stamps everything is your consistent. See, you know, that's how she catches people up or she, you know, she just at least gets ca caught up in her own brain right? Because she, this is what she'll say. She said, I'll stop doing this if you stop lying. And then she accuses you of lying when you didn't lie. And, <laughs> and then she makes shit up about you. That is a complete and very easy to prove lie and then says you have to stop lying about me and that's why it is just absolutely a waste of time to try to engage with this person in any meaningful serious relevant way she is not a serious person okay this is not a serious person you cannot take her seriously her channel should be marked, you know, parental controls for conspiracy, um, perversion, and uh, satire. Okay? <laughs> I mean, that's how it should be marked. Attack on my nonprofit and claiming that it's an LLC or something um, or that it just doesn't exist. Uh, you know, all, all of these things. And you are defaming and saying that I took your private information, your personal information, and that I doxed you. This is fact, ladies and gentlemen. Miss Lynn signed up for Fight for a Family under a fake name. She signed up under a fake name. That is falsification, okay? And in fact, <laughs> I had no idea that she did any what is it called when you pretend you are somebody you're not in order to get information about another person? What do you call that? Help me out. Thank you. Anything. Until she wanted to tell everybody on one of my lives when I just simply welcomed a new member and just said their first name, not doxing anybody, saying, welcome Deborah, one of our new Fight for a Family members. My nonprofit that she attacked, Jay attacked, claiming that I signed and forged documents for Mr. and Mrs. Watts. I mean, this is all, and I'm taking people's IDs and I am selling them on the black market, that I am, you know, I mean, just listen to the stuff that they said, but it's a lot harder now because they're deleting everything that they've said. And that's fine. Uh, that stuff doesn't just go in the trash. 
Like, bye, never happened. Nope, that's not how it works. Hilarious, so right? Gilgamesh. If it's not until our civil stuff is handled in the courtroom, um, when everybody gets to know the exact truth, then hey, then that's just what has to happen on for me. And I'm willing to wait that time. And I've already gone this length of time to. All right. So uh, next, <laughs> next. To make it and, and do all those things. But uh, I will be pushing forward in every capacity possible to make sure that my hearings with both of them and other people are able to be streamed live on my channel because it is for uh, educational purposes. Listen to this. Listen to this, you guys. She's a, she's going on a bit of a rant right now about how she's going to make sure that her hearings are streamed so that everybody can see it. It's a community issue. Right. But then fast forward and, you know, Lala goes to her thing and other people stream it. And now they're all stalking her and monitoring her. Again, grow the, I mean, <laughs> it just, it just never stops. As I've already talked to YouTube about uh, their legal team. Um, and I'll be, you know, pushing for that to happen with, if there's, you know, I'm not some random person coming and sitting in a courtroom. This is my lawsuit. And I want it recorded because of everything that they did on and using a social media platform like YouTube. So I want this to be recorded and it to be live streamed. And hey, so be it. if I lose, great, awesome. Do I see that happening? No, absolutely not. Boom. <laughs> if I lose, awesome. Do I mind it getting streamed? No, I, it, but I'm not going to lose. I'm not. Okay. That's why we have retrospectives like this. She might not learn from this. But I'm willing to bet that most of you are much smarter and willing to look at the facts than she is. And you're willing to see that she is a loser. Okay. And all this big smack talk that she talked about suing all these people and winning in court was all that just fucking talk. It's a big game to her, but she's not good at the sport. This is not high school where, you know, you get participation trophies, you get a scholarship, you know, because maybe you're, you're a better golfer or basketball player than other people in high school. It's different now. You're in the fucking big leagues, girl. People don't, you know, in the big leagues, we don't take your petty ante, childish, demented bullshit not i don't see that happening but if i lose it can be streamed that i lost awesome but the same thing that they tried to do with their platform which was use it to inform a community. and just as a reminder you know i did end up streaming two of her hearings both both of which where she looked like a complete asshole she quote unquote won in one of them and the other one she was smeared across the floor right and she didn't react in an awesome way. What she did was she retaliated in many, many ways against other people, against me and against other people. That's her way. So she didn't live up to, and eh, eh, if I, if I lose, it's fine. I still want it streamed. You're full of shit, girl. Cause if you, if you really wanted it streamed, then why did you create this entire deflection campaign around Alex doing something that she didn't do? Community of me being things that I'm not in my nonprofit being things that it's not. The only way that things can change in the future is that if I have the ability to live stream my hearing and that I'm not prevented from doing that. So I will be filing motions for and to have uh, publicity and to be able to have uh, you know my device if they wanna stream them themselves, go right ahead. But I only care about the truth. Uh, and then when they try to edit the truth, I mean, again, misleading the public. So the truth's going to come out. It's unfortunate that they're deleting everything. 
Um, they're doing it for a reason though. And I think that it should speak volumes to everybody just for the mere fact that they're deleting stuff. Uh, you shouldn't have to delete. And if you are deleting, why are you deleting? Yes, she did. That's exactly what she did. She doxed herself, but see, she doxed herself with a fake name. She's not, her name is not Deborah. Her name's not DeBoer. Her name is not DeBris. Okay. Um, she'll have to answer the question. Why did you sign up for Fight for a Family under a false uh, name? Uh, because I didn't want her to have my real name. Okay. So, or is it that you signed up for it under a false name so that you could then talk all the crazy shit you wanted and say, I don't have a membership. I, don't, I wouldn't know that any of that's on there. Well, then nobody came from, for you. Nobody knew who you were. Um, not in the slightest. Not at all. So, um, Teresa, the, um, she's doubled up sometimes because she plays audio from the other, at that point she did. I don't know if she still does that. I don't watch her near as much anymore. I've got my documentation. <laughs> so, um, so I don't know what she does now, but it's, it was to be able to show, it, um, play audio from a different device, I believe. Uh, but anyway. Uh, there's something else. So I dare Lynn to do what I did and show the receipts, show your private videos, not show each and every one of them and run them, show the titles, show how many private videos you have by showing all your titles. <clears throat> I'll tell you exactly what this is about for me. If there's any questions about what this is about, um, this is about me setting out to do something. And now I'm prohibited from doing that because of the defamation. Um, I have to overcome everything that they have said. And in fact, let me read you something. Take note, the bricks. <clears throat> and now comes petitioner, Lana Oriani, and files his petition for defamation. Defendant, he blank blank. Traditionally, there have been four general categories of untrue statements presumed to be harmful to one's reputation and therefore actionable as an injury claim. The respondent, blank blank, has utilized her YouTube channels, Trauma and True Crime and Insomnia and True Crime, to neg negligently attack my character and nonprofit organization by accusing plaintiff of performing illegal activity. And I'll just stop there. And maybe I'll continue just a little bit more. So she's now reading sections of a, of a purported complaint against me. It's the, it, it, Mel S, it's the beginning of her defamation suit against me, but she's just threatening with it. She's just teasing it because um, she wants me to shut up. She wants me to be quiet. She wants me to get off the internet. She wants me to get off of YouTube. She wants me to never talk about her ever again. Okay. <laughs> for me illegal activities with with a business calling the plaintiff a sexual predator and having over 16 victims and falsely reporting on the operations of a nonprofit organization defendant blank blank actions fall under quote unquote I should probably stop shouldn't I <laughs> I should probably stop um, and the why stop Lana? Why? Why? Because you want to just get a little, you want to just leak a little bit out there to try to scare me enough to be like, oh my God, <laughs> get worked for jobs once you love internet right. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> You're so funny sometimes. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Ugh. Indications that a person was engaged in sexual misconduct, as well as the defendant indicating that a person, the plaintiff, was involved in behavior incompatible with the property with the proper conduct of businesses, trade, or profession. I'm gonna stop right there.
<laughs> see her be all official with the envelope. And look, there's an envelope and there's my papers and I'm going to put the papers in the envelope. And I think she's picturing me being over here like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, I'm going to get so Yes, aggressive paper shuffling. Penalty, red flag, aggressive paper shuffling. Thank you, Anonymous Lucy. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, to me, it was her talking about um, fight for family. My family, me, the families I help. She knows nothing about any of us. Uh, she'll never know anything about any of us. Um, and the number one thing is you have some nerve like the premise of what she's saying here is um, when you don't know me, when you've never met me in person and you've never talked to me, you don't get to have an opinion about what you've seen me do on the internet. Okay. That's what she thinks. That, that That's the premise behind what she's saying here. I don't know you. You don't know me. You don't know me. I don't know you. Like, do you actually think that every journalist who covers everything that happens in the world knows the person that they're writing the journalism about? This is the internet. It's different on the internet. Okay? It's different. Pe everything that I'm saying here, people get to respond to it. People get to critique it if they want. They get to do that even if they don't know me, even if I don't totally like what they're saying, what you do, what Lana does is she crosses way over into providing, you know, a counter opinion to what's been said. She wants to get, she wants to quiet you. So yeah. Calling somebody a sexual predator and saying that there's over 16 victims and writing it in chats. And I'm going to hold you accountable. You know, the funny thing is, is that now you hear Natasha Cooper saying things like, hey, guys, it takes time. Hey, guys, it takes time. All this stuff takes time. Remember back when Natasha Cooper was saying in June and July, I can't wait to get my packet. I can't wait to get my packet. Because I was saying, yep, guys, this stuff takes time. It takes time. Funny how Natasha Cooper is using my words, which back in June and July, you know, and Lynn, all these people changed their names to Rico this and Rico that and thinking it's a big fucking joke. She's so offended at that little minor joke. <laughs> you think it's a joke. Okay. So just to give you a little bit of context, um, <laughs> as she was continuously rambling on about suing everybody, she, she read off the charges for Rico, you know, the Rico statute. Not a name, anonymous, as in Rico, the racketeering and blah, 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 racketeering act, the racketeering act, the gang, you know, and organized crime um, law. So she said she was going to sue us all under Rico. And she named all of us. So um, one day, a bunch of people in Natasha's chat changed our names to whatever Rico. I'm pretty sure. Yes. Like John Gotti Rico, you were probably there at the time. You should have been, you should have gone to the game, Chris, where you, I forget what your name was at that time, but we all changed our names. To, so I was trauma and true Rico. <laughs> but it, it just lasted like a day. It lasted like a day because it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous for her to say, I'm going to sue you all on Rico. I'm going to bring you up on Rico charges. Does she fucking think she's Rudy Giuliani in the 90s? I mean, come the fuck on. Oh, my God. So that's what that's about. Um, look up defamation and look up really how you can how you go about having a leg to stand on. And I have four of them to so possibly nine legs to stand on. And claiming that I'm doing false 
or illegal business activities with my name in my uh, nonprofit. Now just put yourself in this position. <clears throat> if you had a loved one that needed help and was convicted of- See, that's the funny thing, and Anonymous Lucy. <clears throat> you would think that looking it up and reading the statute and reading the laws around it and the uh and the precedent law around it all of that the case history you would learn that you would learn that that doesn't apply to this situation but she will she will decide she will turn it into whatever she wants to turn it into it doesn't matter what the truth is she's going to turn it into whatever she wants to turn it into right so anyway uh let's say murder and I approach that family to try to help them. And then somebody sends them a link to, as in somebody as in Lynn or one of her alts or somebody in association with this woman, sends them a link to go listen to her. How would you, how would you answer that family's questions of what is this? Ask yourself that, ask yourself that question. How, I mean. I would answer factually. I would say, here's the proof of what that what she is saying is false. She couldn't do that. Clearly couldn't do that. And now, hey, they're just crazy people on YouTube, man. I, they're crazy. I don't know what to, to say or do or about it. But again, if you just joined, I want you to see that, you know, what's her name? It's not me entry crime. Wrote me um, about like a 12 minutes pre-recorded video. And it has since been deleted. It was done on Friday. You can ask yourself why. Here's all the videos that she has. That video's gone. The video of her, uh, something about apologizing. No, not even apologizing. It was saying something about my son and then that she was wrong. It wasn't apologizing. She was just wrong. I don't give a shit about any apologies. I don't give a shit about anything to do with Lynn. Um, Lynn, you made a huge mistake. Whatever you want to call it. Mistake. I don't give a shit what you want to call it. Um, but a mistake is something that you learn from and that you make a mistake and then you say that you made a mistake. And, but Lynn has never remotely said any of that. See, when she says things like that, she's proving that she knows these things, but she doesn't act in those ways. So it proves you, she knows that's the right thing to do, but she doesn't do it. But she holds other people to that standard, right? Right. She keeps doubling down on my nonprofit. She keeps doubling down on me as a person, uh, my business practices. Um, and she is going to be, you know, taking a court over it. So same with Natasha. So she went ahead and deleted this. Let's take a look at her trauma and true crime video or channel um, videos. Right, right. So, you know, this was this was November 8th. And just so you know, she filed on this on November 12th and then went live and read the entire um complaint. So you get to hear that as well. But this is the lead up. She was hoping that with this November 8th stream, um, she would get me to shut the fuck up in whatever way. Lynn. Oh. And when have you ever so what you're about to see are clips. Oh, how many people has she actually been into court with in front for in front of a judge? One, two, three. I could be I think it's three, but she has filed like 19 different filings. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. What a blast from the past. Hello, Colleen June. It's so nice to hear, to see you. It's really nice to see you. Thank you for being here. And, and thank you for saying something in chat. It's really, really nice to see you. Um, yeah, the internet is forever Rico forever. So yeah, I'm put, I'm doing this stream. So there's a, 
one clean record of me of the me and Lana saga. Okay. And I'll, whenever any people in the future ask me about it, I'll just link to this. Um, so I, I don't have to, I don't have to answer any more questions, <laughs> you know, in, you know, I can, I'm just, I'm answering all the questions here and they're on the record. This is for the record for, you know, and this is for all the people who, you know, I'll be on somebody else's panel. Like, you know, a couple times I was on burnt toast panel and somebody comes in and goes, Lynn, what happened to your lawsuit with Lana? I just ignore it because they know, they know what happened to my lawsuit with Lana. They're just trying to get me to talk about it. So here I am telling you what happened with my lawsuit with Lana and everything that led up to it and everything that's been happening up until a couple days ago. All right. But this is a rare opportunity. And what you're about to see right here is um, our clips from the video that first set everything up. So this video that she's about to start playing here, I am laying it out, but I'm, I've never laid it out like this. Never. I've never laid it out like this. I've never sat down and just told this entire story. She sits there and tells the entire story over and over and over and over and over and over and changes everything. So, um, oh, thank you so much, Kona Bologna. I really appreciate that. And it, that, it just reminded me to put my links in there for anybody else. Thank you very, very, very much. I appreciate all of you. I really do. So this video that she's about to um, play is the first video. Is the one that triggered everything. The thing that triggered her. That still triggers her. She's playing it. Okay. She's putting the signal out there of what I said about her on my video, the thing that she, the things that she's so offended by or some of them at least. So this is the only glimpse you'll get of that offending video right here because I don't have it either. It's gone. It's deleted. It's forever. Bye-bye except right here. All right. Her fought for anybody's rights or freedoms. So how would you know what to do and say? Where's your experience in any of this? And the last time I checked, Lynn, did I do a pre recorded interview? Nope. Did I do my own interview and reading off a teleprompt? But this is what Lynn thinks that I should have done and said. Let's hear what Lynn thinks I should have done and said. Social media that their son is innocent, but it hasn't worked. So we're creating a media company where they get to say whatever they want. She totally takes this completely out of context. So she just, let's listen again to what, how she teased this up. Okay. Let's listen to how she teased this up. Their son is innocent, but it has. My own interview and reading off a teleprompt, but this is what Lynn thinks that I should have done and said. So I'm, I'm not saying what she should have done and said. I'm saying what I'm about to say would be a much more honest way of describing what I'm launching. This would be a much more honest way to say it. Yeah, it comes off pretty condescending. It's it's snarky. So, uh, of course, anyone would be irritated. The person who this is to would be irritated by it, of course. But so irritated that we're sitting here three years later after a couple of lawsuits. I mean, come on. Let's hear what Lynn thinks I should have done and said. Social media that their son is innocent, but it hasn't worked. So we're creating a media company where they get to say whatever they want without being challenged. We're telling you that it's a nonprofit to help several families fight for justice, but not being forthright about that or exactly where people's money is going. Because if we tell you that we're raising money for a media company where the Watts get to say whatever they want, you're less likely to contribute. The reason my answers about everything having to do with the case are evasive and confusing is because I know nothing about criminal defense law or putting together a nonprofit. I do, however, know how to make it look a lot like I know a lot of professional things. And I do know how to repeat the words that we've all agreed to say to all the people. So I'm here now repeating those words. And if you don't believe them, that's your problem. I'm, I'm paraphrasing folks, but that's what's happening. But 
even calling it a media company, it's slapping a massive layer of lip gloss on a big pig because legit on a big pig. The name calling this is March 15th. Hilarious. She knows that putting a lipstick on a pig is a, an expression. It's not about her or what she looks like or her size. There is a very well-worn, well-said expression, putting lipstick on a pig. And I just changed it ever so slightly. I did not call her a pig. So, but she's like, oh, that, it's all she can hang on to. It's all she can hang on to, right? Oh my God. Oh my God. She said pig. She said pig. Okay. 2021. Slapping lip gloss on a big pig. Many confessions about killing his wife and children. They You're less likely to contribute. They're overachiever. <laughs> Battles. That's not what Fight for a Family is. Fight for a Family is a media organization. This How would she know what Fight for a Family is on March 15th, 2021? You heard what it said it was going to be. I clearly knew a lot better than you what Fight for a Family was and wasn't. Right? Look at the backsplash. And now you are going to go live or pre-record on your channel and tell the world that I'm lying. I'm deceiving my families. And the public. March 15th, 2021. This is Lynn. Lynn. I pray for you every single day. Because I pray for people. That's what I do. That's what my grandma taught me, actually. So you want to talk about me? Oh, my God. Do me a favor and do not pray for me. Please. The last thing I need is you praying for me. <laughs> Living in a basement with my grandma, I wish that that was true. Because that means my grandma would still be alive, right? My grandma was the kindest person. Like, God. And my grandma's always said, you know, turn the cheek and stuff like that. But my grandma also knows the competitiveness and the athlete that's with inside of me. And I have never, Lynn, attacked you. I have defended myself every step. Do y'all hear that? That's her. That is her turning, turning it all around. I never attacked you. You came after me. Darvo, look it up. Darvo. By the way, and this proves me defending myself. You have been out to get me since day one, A1, ride or die in my fucking ass, Lynn. So people who give critical opinions on the internet about things that she does on the internet is riding her ass. Then what do you call this? What do you call what you're doing? I am willing to bet that there are far more broadcast hours of you on me than me on you. And mine are clearly labeled. You know exactly what I'm going to say. And you just throw shit into your speech every single day, no matter what you're talking about. And what we're going to see at the end of this stream Thank you very much, Gilgamesh. I appreciate it. Um, what we're going to see at the end of this stream is how you roll all of this up into one of the worst tragedy perversion sessions I've ever seen. And it's well labeled and well documented right here. That's the truth. This video proves it. All the videos that you deleted, prove it. But then 
you realize all the momentum I'm actually gaining. Well, and Natasha realized it. And oh God, we can't have that happen. Sex predator it is. Here we go. And that's exactly what happened May 27th and actually the weeks leading up to May 27th. And that you guys conspired. And you guys do not live in the same state. And therefore, yes, it can be considered a RICO violation. There you go, baby. Rico, Rico Suave. It's funny looking back on it now because she's so full of shit. She's so full of shit. This was November 8th, 2021. I got you on Rico, baby. I got you dead to rights. Are you scared now? Are you scared? Ah, damn it. Oh, yeah. I hit the wrong button again. Sorry, everyone. Hold on. Catching back up. Catching back up. Nope. Uh, hope you're all doing okay. Recovering from your RICO charges. You racketeers. All of you racketeers. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, man. No, <sighs> almost there. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Was were we on this one? I think we were on this one to make it and, and do all those things. But no, uh, I will be pushing forward. Wrong in one. every capacity. Sorry, wrong, wrong one. Here we are, Lynn. I couldn't get that on all fours, Lynn, and get the waltz. And Lynn, it's because it's going to be because of me. The two innocent men are brought voices of certain chosen families through self-produced podcasts and presumably other social media. These families are hand chosen by Lana, that stalwart warrior for truth and justice, and the first hand chosen. Ta-da! The watch. I went to Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. Nobody knew about Sheldon Jeter Jr. Nobody knew about Jamie Brown. Oh, but guess what? They will. And Lynn, it's because it's going to be because of me. The two innocent men are brought fucking home. Handpicked. And this is only the beginning of what I'm going to accomplish, Lynn. I had truth serum. This is what Lana would actually really be saying between all those weird phrases in that broadcast. The Watts have tried for two years to convince the public through the press and social media that their son is innocent, but it hasn't worked. So we're creating a media company where they get to say whatever they want without being challenged. We're telling you that it's a nonprofit to help their- I couldn't get that on all fours, Lynn, and get the Watts family to, to come forward and say anything like that. Unfortunately, I tried to get the Wattses to stand up for their their son's rights and to endorse the website that they know is not a fraud and all this stuff based on what you guys have tried to do, okay? But they couldn't even come forward because they did not want to be attacked like they've been attacked, like I've been attacked. Several families fight for justice, but not being forthright about that or exactly where people's money is going, because if we tell you that, we're raising money for a media company where the Watts get to say whatever they want. You're less likely to contribute. The reason my answers about everything having to do with the case are evasive and confusing is because I know nothing about criminal defense law or putting together a nonprofit. I do, however, know how to make it look a lot like I know a lot of professional things. And I do know how to repeat the words that we've all agreed to say to all the people. So I'm here now repeating those words. 
And if you don't believe them, that's your problem. I'm, I'm paraphrasing folks, but that's what's happening. But even calling it a media company, it's slapping a massive layer of lip gloss on a big pig because legitimate media companies don't. On a big pig. See, I know that it seems like I'm playing the same thing over again. No, she's playing the same thing over again. Okay. And still, and continuing to re react to it. I didn't even know who you were, Lynn. I still don't know who you are. Who is Lynn? Fuck knows. She pretends to be another name to get a, a, a membership to nonprofit. Lynn, I don't have time to know who you are. All I know is that what you have done is it's time. It's time for you to be handed a dose of reality from the courts. Intentionally disseminate lies to their audience. And they don't intentionally send trolls and political operatives out to the social media landscape to say the exact same words on their behalf everywhere to slander a murder victim. So Fight for a Family is much better characterized as a propaganda machine, masquerading as a charitable cause. While everyone else is caught up in whether their dollars are being funneled toward the big fancy retainer that had to be paid to the lawyers, money is being gathered in the name of charity for the real cause of paying the salaries of a family of propagandists. That's what makes this so very dark. Not only have the Watts willfully ignored their son's many confessions about killing his wife and children, they spent more than two years making sure that everyone who cares about the case experiences grief at the same pace as theirs by doubling, tripling, and quadrupling down on a false and hurtful narrative. They drag people along with them on their- If the Watts haven't spoken, what narrative are the Wattses? Oh, you mean KK's narrative? Their quest to spread the narrative, but as they keep getting flushed out by things like insistence on facts and critical thinking, they dig deeper and deeper and deeper all the way to the depths of letting the likes of people like Lana Oriani talk them into launching a propaganda house where they can say whatever they want without being challenged. That's where it's come to folks. The Watts have worked with a fraudster to stand up a propaganda house masquerading as a chair. The Watts have worked with a fraudster. Lynn, how are yep. you going to come out on top? I like to come on top too, Lynn, but how are you going to come out on top? Oh, I just heard that. That's the first time I heard that, you guys. Did you hear that? Jesus. Lynn, how are you going to come out on top? I like to come on top too, Lynn, but how are you going to come out on top? You're looking at it. How you like me now? So what does this mean for the 35C? What if we contribute money and they don't get it and it doesn't work? Well, Lana has that covered too, because fight for a family isn't just for the Watts. It's there for count them for four different families who find themselves in the same position of losing their voices. It's fail proof, right? Don't fall for it, folks. Don't fall for it. Another thing we do in the marketing space is capture the primary narratives that see here's the thing. And this is why she doesn't get it. I was speaking way over her head. She has no clue how to grasp actual marketing analysis and critique. Okay. Spring out of a company or group and analyze the narrative against the facts as they're known. So what I'd like to do in conclusion here is go through the primary narratives that have come blasting at me through the atmosphere of Planet Watts. 
as the deep state is attempted to get me to believe some version of Chris's innocence and then give you my opinion of how those narratives stack up against the fact. So narrative one is that the Watts were completely excluded from Chris's due process by the defense team and the prosecution. Um, you guys get the drift. I'm, you know, kind of going to fast forward through some of the things I say because I don't say anything super shocking, you guys. I, I really don't. They're shocking to her because somebody saw through her shit, honestly. Um, but so you're seeing her reaction. And as light as she likes to say, as she likes to say, it's not what happens to you. It's how you react to what happens to you. This is her and her reaction to what quote unquote is happening to her, which is just an opinion that's critical of what she's doing on the internet. Okay. So, so has Lana done everything that she said she was going to do? And the answer is yes. And she's done it despite all of this fucking bullshit. And all they want to talk about is that I'm so concerned with views. Well, you guys are the ones that talk about views all the time. So who's really concerned with views? But if you're going to bring up views, well, yeah. You attacking and defaming and going after me and everything that I stand for and lying on me and using platforms of other channels to do so, like you did, you went on other people's channels after you said stuff about my family and me and my nonprofit in March. And you lied on on me and the and the nonprofit. Um, so again, you didn't even let the nonprofit have a, a day to even like do anything. You came blazing with not just this but other things. And the question is why? I think somebody even put it in chat why. And she has claimed that she's always had to combat and be the on the defense of me because I attack her. This was March fifteenth, two thousand twenty one, and there was stuff way before this date. Okay. But right here, this is the big daddy attacking the nonprofit fight for family. And saying it's not what it's intended to be, that I'm lying to people, uh, money, why, just everything. And the question is why, Debris? Nobody knew who you were. Uh, excuse me, Lynn. Nobody knew who you were. I didn't know who you were. Nobody knew who you were. And the answer is, I don't know. I don't care. It'll probably come out uh, in court. But what I do care about and what I what I want other people to know is that Everybody that is new, I'm not the one. Um, I'm the one that's had to defend myself against all of this. Um. Uh, no, Chris, the nonprofit is shut down. And that's the the, the backsplash on my um, presentation here is the cancellation certificate from the state of Ohio saying your nonprofit is canceled. And so that's why we're kind of coming full circle with this presentation, which started yesterday, which was three years to the day since I called bullshit on that nonprofit that is now canceled. <laughs> so. And I'm just tired. I'm tired of having to deal with people like this. And that's why, um, like when people say, why do people go real life? Well, everything's real life. Oh, no, it's okay. Fighting for people's rights and fighting for their freedom is real. Uh, just because you see something on you. You're not dense, Chris. You're not dense. I don't expect everybody to have caught everything. I miss things all the time. YouTube, unlike, like, Lynn pre-records stuff, so maybe it's not real. I'm live in the flesh right here. Like, ooh, it's whirling around. Like, it's just, hey, it's me. I'm not reading off a teleprompter. I don't even have notes. Um, I don't need notes. When you know the truth and you know the facts, you don't need notes. My ADD sometimes he notes, but that's, that's about why it. you're caught lying so This shit is all on your nuts, girl. Yeah, she is. She's been on my nuts since, uh, fuck, she ducks my dad. She was on my nuts. On um, her nuts. Again. And then she, delete, she deleted everything, so you'd have to ask her that, why she deleted everything. Not ever. What was the interesting thought there, Boston? I love your comments. You know, I love you, girl. Defamation, civil suit evidence piece number one. Defam. Is actually a video that was transcribed uh, and dated on March 1st, 2021 by YouTube creator Trauma and True Crime. 
So March 1st, this was March 15th, March 1st. Evidence video number two is the 15th. Evidence video number three is 424. Okay, shuffling. Video by Trauma and Crime. Shuffling. Please remember then, to hit the thumbs up. Thank you very much. Then 527 is the evidence that has been transferred a cease and desist that she just mailed back, return to sender. <laughs> and Lynn's notice a cease and desist, which goes out. Uh, no, I never got a cease and desist. I didn't mail it back. I never received it. This was 2021. The date is kind of hidden behind the some of the view there. It's November 8th, 2021. Yep, everybody's writing her titties or her nuts, or, and she even makes merchandise out of that. Gross. All right, let's move to the next one. Peace and desist, which goes out. Why so in the community, personal and professional career and character. Under the laws in the state of Ohio, it is unlawful for an individual to make deliberate statements that intend to harm a person's reputation without factual evidence or based on hearsay. The, def the defamatory statements include, but are not limited to the following, stating publicly that Lana is operating a fraudulent nonprofit organization and sending members IDs and credit card information. And last but not least, referring to Lana as a sexual predator with over 15, or with over 16 victims. If you do not cease all related statements, a defamation of character lawsuit will be commenced against you. And she didn't. In addition, it shall serve as a pre-suit letter demanding that you provide us written assurances within 10 days that you will cease and desist from making any further factually untrue statements regarding Miss Oriani. So right now she's reading a letter that I never received. And I, so it's honestly not that important because you're going to hear all this same repetitive bullshit coming up soon. Fucking thing. So here we go. So you guys want you guys wanted a piece of me? You want to come for me? Well, let's do this. Let's go. Let's go get it where she came from yeah i don't know um and you get you basically get the point she's reading all this garbably gook and making all her wrong conclusions and bad assumptions and everything and everything to try to scare me <laughs> just to, just straight up trying to scare me i am trying to find this one part where she outright threatens all kinds of people uh, i mean i do think that i'm light on the eyes a little bit but whatever uh, I want to thank everybody for joining in. Uh, if you guys have any questions, I would love to answer them. If you feel that anything, uh, stuff in February. Um, and I didn't really actively start using my YouTube channel until like I was just a, your average citizen. Um, all they have done is delete their videos. But I think you guys, I believe I can help. That's a period. I fucking lame. Or stay the fuck out of my lane. I believe in their innocence. I believe I can. Help. But I think you guys got the gist. Uh, I'm not fucking around. Um, either be part of following true crime cases that I take on because I believe in their innocence. I believe I can prove their innocence. I believe I can help uh, and work with their lawyers or stay the fuck out of my lane because if you fucking come into my lane, there's consequences for, for coming into my fucking lane. And that's, that's just the way it is. See, that was a threat. That was a threat. Stay out of my lane. Stay out of my lane. There's consequences for coming in my lane. Bialch. That's period. Um, again, they come with no receipts. I always come with receipts. Just like I'm going to come with the biggest, the biggest live streams that you guys are going to be able to hopefully watch. You guys should want to watch it. You guys have been following this fucking drama ass bullshit and you guys can say it's drama for you. Well, guess what? This is my fucking life. It's not drama for me. So if you think this is drama, then this is my, uh, this is my livelihood. This is my name. But yeah, for some of you guys, you could say, oh, Lana's getting mixed up in the drama. No, no. This is my life and it's not drama. They committed true crimes against me and they're going to pay for them. So, um, and yeah, Lynn, I'm suing for a million dollars. So there you have it. What else do you want me to tell you? You see? <laughs> hey, JP. You see? You see what I mean? So, I, I just want to replay that for you once real quick. Once again, right there. It's not drama. They committed true crimes against me and they're going to pay for them. So, um, and yeah, Lynn, I'm suing for a million dollars. So there you have it. What else? Do you She's suing me for a million dollars. She sued me for a million dollars. 
because I uh, committed crimes on her. And here we are, two years later. None of that was proven. The burden of proof is on you and you failed. Yes, she was suing me for a million dollars for defamation. Defamation. Okay. <laughs> so, um, and yeah, Lynn, I'm suing for a million dollars. So there you have it. What else do we tell you? Trauma. This is my life. And. And I also want to point out how she keeps saying that this is a true crime. So this is why, this is why I keep saying this. She is a tragedy pervert. So just another quick recap. Okay. I give a critical opinion. She goes bonkers um, with this sexual harassment. She takes the fact that I have um, child sex abuse and a mental illness and uses it as a weapon against me, then claims to be the victim so much so that she sues me for $1 million. Okay? So... <laughs> She's a tragedy pawn star. She's a tragedy pervert. She perverts everything, including real justice, including every true crime cases she case she touches, including the one ones where she involves herself. All right. So um, she's turning. The fact that she took my tragedy and tr and you made content weeks and weeks and hours and hours of mocking content out of my tragedy. Now, now she's the victim and she's going to sue me for one million dollars. OK. It's not drama. They committed true crimes against me and they're going to pay for them. So, um, and yeah, Lynn, I'm suing for a million dollars. So there you have it. What else do you mean to tell you? One million. Some of the other people I'm suing for a penny. So. I thought about it. They were just flat out lying. Lying to the point of just like, God, what the fuck? It, it didn't matter. I could like, like Kennedy said it before, man, I could cure cancer and you know, they would be over there saying something. Um, so, <laughs> uh, what I see is someone who wants to work on something you're passionate about, Lana. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie though. I, I'm definitely, I think that I'm pretty good at what I do too though. So, um, because if you're not good at something like this, then you, you can't help people. That's the unfortunate. Nope. I'm not only paying that million, she, she rightfully owes me. Okay. She owes me and she knows it because she cost me time and money with that bullshit lawsuit and she knows it. Um, you know, I don't have this mega platform that, you know, millions of people are going to see what I'm doing. So I have to be good at what I do. And that's what I believe. I believe that I am good at what I do. Very good at what I do. And, um, I believe that I can help people. And of course, I'm going to be selective of who I help because um, that's how life should be. You should be selective of things. It doesn't mean that you don't believe in, in, you know, in someone else's story or something like that. But since then, you know, yeah, it's just, you know, be careful, especially I think the, I think the Facebook groups are worse. Um, if you don't protect yourself, you know, they can get your information. So true. It's way beyond drama. Yeah, that's definitely not drama. So true. It's frightening. I'm fairly new to this world and finding the hatefulness and frightening. Yeah, it's just, you know, be careful, especially I think the, I think the Facebook groups are worse. Um, if you don't protect yourself, you know, they can get your information a hell of a lot easier than they can by a YouTube, you know, alt name. Yeah, this is a drama. This is my life. And I encourage all of you guys to take your life and grab by the balls, grab by the tits and do what you got to do. I know that's how I live my life. And this fuck ridge, it's over. It's time. Yeah, a little bit. And the reason why is because I mean, something that I know that I would do, like I said, that they're just, they're not like me. That's the whole, that's the problem. Uh, that they're doubling down on their actions and they're just lying and then they're deleting things. And I'm proving like I just showed, you know, March 15th, March 1st, like what the fuck it's November. And you're going on a lot or a pre-recorded episode to say that I came for you and that you're defending yourself. Get the fuck out of here. I didn't even know what the fuck you were. Um, all they need, all they should have done back 
because who are their friends to say, guys, what are you doing? Guys, like, this isn't fucking funny. But this is what Natasha Cooper is going to try to say is, nope, these are the people that reached out to me and they told me they were Lena's victim. So you guys need to understand that's coming. Natasha Cooper is doubling down and saying, nope, here's this person's name, this person, this person, this person. This is what they messaged me. This is what they said. So that's where. Okay. I know that it's easy to pass this up through all the gobbledygook, but listen to what she's saying here. Listen to what she's saying. She is trying to tell all the victims that that Natasha supposedly knows and has contact with that they're going to be outed because Natasha to, Natasha is going to turn their names over. They're going to be outed. She is in, outwardly intimidating the witnesses, any of these quote unquote victims that might've come forward. She's saying, if this goes to court, if, if Natasha goes to court, all your shit's coming out. You better know that. What people don't realize is, is that this is not just an Natasha Cooper thing. This is not just a Lynn thing. Uh, KK Scarlett. Um, where are the names? My child of love here. Andrea, Scarlett, Natasha Lynn, Jay, Cam, Gina, Kelly, and Lindsay. Um, <clears throat> if Natasha Cooper has it planned that she's going to cough up your name, if you've ever reached out to her, okay? Um, and she is going to say that, nope, this is what was said to me. Okay, these are the people, blah, blah, blah. So be prepared for you to be drawn into this, okay? If you guys have husbands out there that have no idea that you are involved in this world, okay? In this in this behavior, you guys are gonna get drawn in. There's a lot of people out there. That is just a form of blackmail right there. You got husbands who don't know about this shit. They're gonna know about it now. So they have no idea what's coming because I'm putting down witnesses and yeah, you can plead the fifth. Sure. There's also there's also things that can happen. I mean, just be prepared. Be prepared because there is um they have a plan. And I'm being kind right now to tell you what I'm, their plan is. And Natasha Cooper is throwing all of you guys under the fucking bus. She's gonna give all of your guys' government names up. Okay, she has no choice. She's gonna say, you all use her for her platform. She's basically previewing what she will do. That's what she's doing. Okay. And that you guys brought this to her. Just letting y'all know. This is what's about to happen. Yeah, exactly. Why do you have to fly to Ohio? Why do you have to come to Ohio? What's going on? Ugh. Wait, you're listed as the defendant? No, I'm a witness. What do you mean you're a witness? Ugh. Uh, well, I told some people that, you know, <laughs> uh, but, that I was a victim of this girl, Lana. Wait, wait, what? What have you done? So now she's playing it out for you. This is what will happen if you try to report that you're a victim of mine. This is what the conversation will look like. Okay. What have you done? I mean, explain that to your family. Explain that to your husband, your wife, whoever. Explain why you are forever going to be in court proceedings about this. Like, that's the thing is that this will be searchable. Okay. This will always be searchable. And it's like. No. She's giving an argument for victims to not come forward. And this is why victims don't come forward. That's why victims don't come forward. They get shut down by people like this bitch. Sorry, but I mean, right. No, I, do I feel bad for anybody? Absolutely not. This has gone on for fucking almost nine months. Nine months. Nine months. Feel bad about what? That you tried to fucking ruin, that you tried to ruin my life? That your goal was to ruin me? Who the fuck wakes up in the morning and says that I'm gonna go ruin someone's life? Somebody that I don't even know you people. I don't even know you people, but, I, but I'm gonna do everything I can to try life that your goal was to ruin me who the fuck wakes up in the morning and says that i'm gonna go ruin someone's life somebody that i don't even know you people damn the fucking right there's a lot of people that don't even realize they're gonna be that they're listed as witnesses like they don't even know it i mean i know it but they don't even know it yet and, and how about this fuck feeling bad for me where where's your brains where is your brains to, to know that this is if Lynn, 
if Lana takes us to the level that she takes us to, we have, we have some issues, we have some problems. It's problematic. It's gonna be really problematic for, you know, and like I said, you know, these people think that it's, that it is what it is, but it's not, my life isn't just, it is what it is. My life is fucking amazing and it's gonna stay amazing. And everything that I've ever fucking told anybody who's ever watched me is the fucking truth. I have no reason to lie. Um, and if I was lying, I'd be getting caught left and right in lies. But I go above and beyond for people. I will always go above and beyond for people. That's just how I'm wired. I can't tell you why I do it. All I can tell you is, is that maybe how I was raised, wired, whatever the fuck you want to say, I don't shit. But how I'm also raised is don't, you don't fuck with me. I don't fuck with you. You don't fuck with me. And then you come at me and you come in my lane and you lie on me and everything that I stand for and believe in, you better fucking believe that I'm going to do something about it. Period. Okay. None of this is a mistake. None of these people made a mistake. These people all, like Lynn said, double, tripled, quadrupled down on their shit. And then they go sad fishing and cry to every single fucking sub that I'm some big bad bully. And all of you guys think that I'm just some tough ass bitch. Fucking yeah, Lana just puts them in her place, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but you know what? I've had to go through a fucking shit ton every single day to put people in their place. But yet, do you know how much time it takes away from what the fuck I actually need to do? A lot of time. And time is fucking money. Yep. And they're going to fold. <laughs> Andy, my husband knows. I told him if I am ever being set up, find Lana on YouTube. Goddamn right. I'm betting $30,000 on Lana. That Lana comes out with mm, a lot more than that. You guys, I, I'll repeat this so many times. Don't get discouraged when you see a chat and there's only like 100 people in there or 75. Or I mean, look at this way. People have lives. People can't. You know, I cropped it such that you could see there's five people in chat. That's why she's saying these things. <laughs> I'm being a little bit petty here. So watch me every second of the day that I decide to the point of we find out on this person or that person or whatever. They're always going to have more of a following associated with. It. I can just see a lot of, um, you know, when I play a video of Lynn, I don't see people saying things like she's homeless or she, you know, God fucking knows. Because I'm not. And they just never happen. Bothersome for them. Lazy creators have just relied on lies, propaganda over years, but I don't send anybody anywhere. I don't need to. Here, here, how can I give you this money? You know, and, and I'm over here like, here guys, let's just, here. I have, I have a little something to say. Sheldon Jeter Jr. needs $999 to go on his books because this is what they do. They take half of the money. It's a big fucking, it's, it's prison system. So he needs $999 to put on his books. And I'm over here like, well, God, if we, if we all just give five bucks, I mean, this is like, this is somebody that's not guilty. If he was fucking, I proved numerous times the fuckery it's been on and how he was convicted and then to find out that the juror was the neighbor of Rachel Altondo, okay? People over there are super chatting. Ridiculous amounts of money for what? And I'm over here like, well, here, here's somebody that's innocent. I want to put money on his books. If we all get five bucks, fuck, we're, we're halfway there, right? Um, so trust me when I say this, I will bring the receipts, okay? If I say that I'm doing something Fuck, you don't even want to see all the receipts from back in the day. I mean, there's been so much money spent. Trust me. And there ain't no money coming in from like these ridiculous amounts of memberships because people weren't getting memberships because of everything that was being said. Mm. Um, and that's why I had to stay more focused on this YouTube platform to clear my name of everything. So Dragonfly asks me if I'm single, then proceeds to say, when you speak this way and talk with your strengths and show your emotional side, it gives me a whole new perspective of you. It's an eye-opener for sure. Well, then Dragonfly, this is what I can tell you, is that you're not watching any of my case content. So I suggest that you watch case content because that's where you're going to see um, like everything you just said right there to a T. Um, if you're just watching the drama stuff that they that just drop, it's my real life and my strength. They're bullshit, okay? So they're affecting to do this every day. Um, thank you. Happy to be a member. Thank you. Fuck the Christmas trees are not as good as they say. So I'm gonna community. But the only thing that's going to tell you everything you would ever need to know about somebody and truly who they were and, and do what they did with it. And that's something that I want to know about. He won't give up the source. And should I tell you something? It's because that person is
Not sure why I'm, why I'm getting, maybe because I didn't stop the last video. Let me check. But I think that if, if, if Crafton wants truth and transparency between me and him, well, same thing, Crafton. I had no idea who the fuck you were. Once again, you're coming into my lane and, um, but Dragonfly seems to know maybe that they think about who it could have been. You should be able to figure that out. We should see. We'll see. Lana goes hunting for all the best things. Just remember that. <laughs> that cap and I, I have that machine gun. Oh yeah. Bass Pro, that they have good ones. Um, thank you. Right around like this time, you start buying like the retro stuff. So start looking. <laughs> yeah. So. I, but I don't think the craft is gonna need to give up the source, but I just think if you want, uh, if you want some, well, here I have it up right now, so let's talk about it. Fuck it. Oh, let's see, Lynn. I can't play this part ah, because she plays, a, she plays a copyright. Sorry, this could be what? No, this isn't sorry. This is pickles. I'm gonna do. Yes, I am. I'm doing my. I didn't say that. You didn't. No. No. So I guess. I guess. Who? Wait. Yeah, so oh, this is she just plays she basically just goes on to continue threatening people all the people so many people whoever's in her field of vision they get to be threatened okay and uh, <laughs> uh So, on November 12th, she drops the bomb. She drops the bomb. You are sued for... Oh, she did talk about Pew Pew somewhere, and I didn't... I I must have passed through that. It's... We do know it's there. I, I may go back to that, but I think I might have passed through it. Sorry. But she did. She talked about Pew Pews. She's like, I got my pew pews right here. So then on November 12th, on November 12th, she sues me for defamation. Literally, I mean, you're looking at the paperwork right there. This is not a serious person, you guys. Oh, did I go, th did I pass it? Did I, did it play and I missed it? I must've been distracted. Oh, well. Well, it's here. It's on the record. She said she has pew pews right here. Right? Why do you say that? Why would you say you have your pew pews right here? Why? Why? <sighs> so, and it's, you know what's even funnier, Anonymous Mouse Lucy? J is for Justice's paperwork had the exact same mistake on it. Okay. This is not a serious person. You can't take a person like this seriously. Lana may tr could try to go to law school. She would never make it through the first day of law school. She wouldn't make it through the first day. She'd be sitting there harassing people too much and they'd be like, get out of here, bitch. Anyway, so um, on November 12th, um, she files this lawsuit. And then she, uh, of course, goes live to read the um, <clears throat> to read the entire document, and she posts a promotional video. Isn't that cheery? So who, who puts together a promotional video to say that they're going to be suing 12 people? That would be Lana. Again, true the transparency. Thank you guys for joining. Uh, mod squads got to love this time. Uh, three Eastern. West Coast people are like eating lunch. 
how we doing? Did you guys, uh, if you believe in uh, that there are wrongfully convicted people, persons, join in on the fight. So become a member, fightforafamily.com, go to the website, all the cases that uh, I'm involved with. Yeah, Max Smith, I actually did try to take the LSAT and I bombed it because <laughs> I did want to go to law school. I bombed the LSAT and I'm like, okay, I don't think law school is for me. <laughs> it was a good um, weeding out tool. So um, I'm going to gauge how much of this I really need to play. She pl she reads my lawsuit against me. Okay. The long each case is up there. It gets updated. Got a lot of exciting things. It's, you know, basically she just reads it. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you her speech before reading the lawsuit. And the reason is because she, she gives this speech about how she had this dream of helping people and it was just shut down by all these horrible people on the internet. So she's basically trying to weave this, you know, um, martyr tale about why she's doing this, you know, it, it's part of the Darvo collection of her toolbox. She's so she's on the in the you know um, reverse victim and offender mode of Darvo. Okay, it's coming up in December. Um, I will start here in. <clears throat> uh, truth or dare? So excited for this. Well, I might be excited for it, but it's been nine months of uh, real life for me. So. Uh, some of you guys watch my channel uh, because you actually enjoy it um, and you enjoy true, true crime. Uh, some of you guys enjoy me. Thank you. Uh, some of you guys are still on the fence about me. Some of you guys don't know me uh, and you're coming over new. Um, and then there's also people that watch me uh, for their own agendas, uh, whatever that may be. Uh, some of you guys might not know, but I am the president of Fight for a Family. It's a nonprofit organization. Uh, my main role with being the president of Fight for a Family is to oversee all operations. But my most important uh, role to me uh, is is customer service. And what I mean by that service is um, I'm hands-on with all of the cases that I'm involved with by personally investigating them. Um, I cover and work directly with the families, uh, the inmates, uh, and the inmates and themselves. That's a good one, Teresa. Uh, I have shared tears with families, heart-to-hearts with family members, uh, broken down discoveries with family members. Um, but by far the most important thing that I, that I know that I've done and will continue to do is to give families hope. Um, the families see it for themselves, just how much I care for them personally, as well as their rights and the rights of their loved ones that are behind bars. The family members believe and trust in me because I put the natural work into them, uh, their families, their loved ones, and I earn their trust. I am proud of the person that I am, and I'm proud <clears throat> that my son gets to call me his mom. I judge myself on, would my son be proud of me? And I believe my son is proud of me, and if I continue to do what I've always been doing in my life, he will always be proud. In order to help other families, <clears throat> you have to show that you can and are able to help your own family. And that is why this episode is happening. Uh, because I am taking care of myself, my family, which includes obviously me, my family. I was very excited um, to launch and begin Fight for a Family because I finally figured out a way to use my special talents as well as to exert and use my so as you can see Atlanta is weaving her journey her hero's journey where she she, she was so excited to create the nonprofit and help people and then she just got torn down and so in the in the story arc of her journey she's she was cut down by mean people right passion um, because ever since I was little I've always wanted to find a way to work within a legal and justice system uh, and to be a valuable asset not particularly on one side or the other uh, but to bring both sides together <clears throat> I have to believe that just as much hey everyone let's I, I prefer if we just um, keep the discussion of family members out of the chat it we're not really talking about that right now and it's just gives her a reason to believe that we're um, targeting her family. So um, please and thank you. As much as I want to help innocent inmates and their families, I have to believe that our elected judges, DAs, and law enforcement agencies feel the same way. I have to and want to believe that law enforcement 
agents, judges, and DAs want to serve proper justice by holding the responsible party accountable. Caring if they got it right matters, should matter. But that being said, I envisioned so many possibilities with the launch of Fight for a Family. I was like a kid at Christmas, just thinking about the amazing new chapter of my life that I was gonna be starting, uh, so many different branches and different ways to have this nonprofit help people that are in need. Um, but most of all, it would focus on bridging the gap that should not exist between the quote unquote prosecutor side and the defender side. Unfortunately, before I could even get one foot out the door with Fight for a Family or one night worth of dreaming uh, of these amazing possibilities, People found out that I dressed up as the a murder victim, put on a zombie face, and called it Shazam. That's what happened. The unthinkable and unimaginable happened. <clears throat> my journey begins now uh, to fight for my dreams, my livelihood, the truth, and proper justice. You can follow these 12 episodes, which begins today, to see how I ended up where I am today, which is P.I.ing Jamie Brown's case, Sheldon Jeter Jr.'s case, beginning on Lindsay Purden's case, and Rachel Otombo's case. I did all of this while battling to overcome one of the most traumatic experiences of my life the past nine months. <clears throat> oh, so that was a traumatic experience in your life? Okay. When reading this out loud, the papers that make up a complaint, and you sit back and you read it out loud, it becomes more real than it has ever felt for me in the past nine months. Probably because I was in shock all the time, uh, thinking to myself, how is this actually happening um, on a daily basis? Um, a lot of shock was there. <clears throat> Again, today is one of 12 days that I will take the time to address publicly each civil complaint by reading a redacted copy of the complaint. So did you hear that? She talked about 12 different lawsuits, 12 different complaints, and this is the first one and it's mine. She ends up filing two, it, at least for this, you know, in this particular um, flare up that she had, she was going to be doing 12. She ended up doing two. And then later she went this civil protection order route because it was an easier way for her to, um, to get her to get leverage over all these people that she's trying to quiet on the internet. I've always been transparent to the truth. This is my, uh, true crime channel uh, and what has happened to to me over the past nine months in my true crime story. Uh, please be kind in chat, love. Uh, and if this is not your cup of tea, uh, there's plenty other daytime programs on YouTube. Uh, Jen in Jersey, she didn't follow through with most of the lawsuits that she filed. The vast majority of the lawsuits she filed were dismissed because she didn't do what she was supposed to do. The ones that she fought she also failed except for one, and in my view, she cheated to get that one win. That can fancy your wants and needs. <clears throat> in the Franklin County Court of Common Pleas, Columbus, Ohio, Lana Oriani plaintiff verse to be held redacting here, Miss Lynn, case number 21 CV 007132 defendant. All right. So now she reads the the um complaint. Now I could I could play the entire complaint here. It's really boring. It's the same old shit. It's the same old stuff you've heard. It's all the things that she's already been accusing me of. She failed in court, so it doesn't really matter that much. Okay. Um, but, uh, if anyone is super duper interested, I'm happy to make this, this particular video public. And I also do have a video on my channel where I read it and react to it. All right. So yeah, <laughs> she's probably already been doing that Colleen June. We just don't know about it. <laughs> Complaint for defamation of character and defamation per se. Let's uh, let's see. In her firm, on or about February 20th, blah, blah, 10, blah. member profiles and accept a gateway blah, blah. on or about February 28th blah, video blah, blah, blah. on her YouTube channel and slanderous on its face. Slanderous. It clearly <clears throat> Burn the proof was on you. You didn't prove it. You plaintiff lost had never okay. The plaintiff. Okay. okay. So let's go to the next video. The next video is still, I believe, 
her just continuing to read through the complaint. What's going on here? Ha, 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 ha. Oh. Something odd is happening. I'm still live, right? Yep, I'm still live. It's something, uh, the... <clears throat> the defendant's YouTube video publication on March 15, 2020, was the second of many pre-recorded videos that referred to... It's not letting me... Oh, maybe if I do this. Yeah, okay. Yep, here we are. The defendant's YouTube video publication on March 15, 2020 was the second of many pre-recorded videos that referred to the plaintiff by name throughout, was made of and concerning plaintiff, the nonprofit organization. Blah, blah. The blah, video can be retrieved. Blah, blah. Was on her way to enjoy to enjoy time with her family in redacted. Blah, blah, blah. Wherefore, the plaintiff demands judgment against the defendant for special damages, consequential, incidental, and punitive damages together with lawful interest, cost of suit, and reasonable <clears throat> attorney fees in the sum of $1 million. <laughs> Sorry, that was an involuntary laugh. That is so fucking funny. Um, Watch how that. God, this is why I have no fucking throat. Listen to this. Watch this again. Cost judgment against the defendant for special damages, consequential, incidental, and punitive damages together with lawful interest, cost of suit, and reasonable <clears throat> attorney fees in the sum of $1 million. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, God, this is why I have no fucking throat. That's just awesome. That's fucking so funny. <laughs> I have no throat. I just read through this complaint. Ooh. I have no intention of following through with because I'm we'll speak so briefly. <laughs> oh. uh, like I said, in the paperwork, I have no idea who these people were. I, um, and so she says the same. And, I didn't know who these people were. They came at me, blah, 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 blah. So then I posted this reaction where I basically just laughed through it like she did. And I'm like, defamation? Defamation? How the hell are you going to sue me for defamation? What is the... <laughs> what is the statute for defamation? Tell me what defamation is. <laughs> it's hybrist hybristophilia. Aunt Lala, it's hybristophilia. So I post that video. All right. And I did that on my um, second channel, my backup channel. And then on November 17th, she tells somebody that she's contacted my ex-husband. She's contacted my ex-husband. What? What the fuck? Go in real life much? Okay. She had the right name. She had the right name of him. And then um, she, you know, she keeps putting out more threats, accusing me of more things. I put on my uh, trauma and true ASMR. I was doing a little bit of whisper ASMR for a little while there. It was a nice little experiment. I, I still have the channel. I could return to it anytime. And I basically said, hey, how about you shut the fuck up on YouTube until... All of that happens, you know, my shut the fuck up letter from my lawyer to you, and then you double down. So how about, since this will be decided by a court, you shut the fuck up on YouTube until that happens. If I will, you will. No, didn't happen. She didn't shut the fuck up. I went into her chat once because there was like this kumbaya going on over, and she's like, I'm unblocking trauma and true crime so she can come on. She can come into chat while Natasha's on my panel. And I went in there and I went into the chat. And the first thing she puts into the chat as I come in is her cash app and says, for my fake engagement party. So she's still on that track, right? And we're in December of 2021. So then I filed suit against her and several other parties. I didn't sue her or them for defamation. I sued for... In, intentional infliction of emotional distress. 
And on the, the long story short with my lawsuit that I filed is that in the process of this, you know, litigation takes a long time. There's a lot of different steps to it. All right. There are natural steps that you take. And um, one of the natural steps I took is that when she did not respond to my um, complaint within 30 days, uh, she tried to file her response to my lawyer directly saying that she was filing it when she sent it via email to my lawyer. That's not a response. So I tried to get a default judgment and it didn't work. And by that time, by that, by the time that that um, decision was made and there was a default judgment, there, there was, there was a, um, uh, a decision that I could not get a default judgment and she had basically been started focusing on other things. She started focusing on other things. She was very distracted by other things by this time going after a lot of other people, a lot of other people. So I basically, you know, it, I dismissed the lawsuit saying, all right, I, I can come back to this if I need to. And I dismissed the lawsuit against everybody. Okay. So things were fairly quiet from the back and forth perspective at that point. But if I was going to be covering her, I was going to be doing it, talking mostly about not my experience with her, but what she continues to do to other people and to true crime families. And that's what I've done. I've just continued to do that. All right. So that's the story of the lawsuit. Now, and realize that at this point, when she has sued me and I've sued her. There are two different lawsuits on the table. There's one for her against me. There's one for me against her. Um, well before her, she loses her case against me, mine was dismissed by me because, um, you know, basically the harassment, the overt and the ongoing harassment had stopped. Okay. So that happened. And then, you know, I'm telling her, hey, your service failed. <laughs> and she's telling, she's playing a big, making a big game. The courts will ruin my way. I'm beyond confident in my abilities and the truth. How did that age? How did that age, baby? All right. So then um, she just continues posting my first name everywhere she goes and saying that I have that she's finally received my home address. Well, she got my home address because I sued her, but it wasn't my home address. She was trying to uh, she was trying to um, serve me through my lawyer, but she couldn't serve me through my lawyer because I hadn't hired my lawyer for that case. Okay? Okay. So So he couldn't he couldn't accept service for me. So then Lana says some very lovely things about me in the DMs right here. This is a pretty quick clip, so I'm going to play it. I told him to just bang Lynn already. Fuck. I said, fuck that woman straight for fuck's sake. I said, she's a raging lesbian. I've seen her type so many times. She said, is she, LOL? I said, dude, she hates men. I love men. I love all sexy, smart folks with nice teeth and some confidence. I said... She is just that typical closet raging lesbian who hates men and, and hates anyone who calls her lesbian ways out. Did you hear her talk about the fake engagement we had? I'm sorry, V, but I just died laughing. I'm, 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 so they're allowed to parody me every single day, and I can't say that I'm having a fake engagement? I mean, how, how double standard is that? All right, so... You know, she's going and telling other people in the DMs that she's telling other people to, to bang me already. All right. That's interesting and mature. Um, here, she admits in a private voice message that she does access people's addresses when they sign up for her website. Neither. I mean, I did, a, I did a whole little investigation of her. And let me just tell you this. When she signed up for the website, she used a... Um, she used a, the address of a shopping center where she gets her, some of her mail sent. Yeah. See, 
she knows that somebody uses a mail, uh, you know, a, a PO box in a, like a mall or whatever in a shopping mall because they signed up for her website. So if you've signed up for her website, she has your information. And I've been saying this all along. So then I started posting videos on Checkmate Humanity about what she does with true crime victims. And Lana, oh, this was, uh, this is kind of out of order. Oh no, yeah. Lana doesn't actually get her IRS verification letter for a full year after she applies for it. Now it was retroactive. So I stopped saying that she didn't have a 501c3. Um, does she disclose that she uses their data? You know, California. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Doubtful. She, you know what her follow by the rules. Everybody else is supposed to follow by the rules for her, but she doesn't have to. No, no. Um, so then, uh, she also announces that fight for family has taken her, on as a client for a legal appeal in her many other one of her many other cases that she's doing you can't do that that is a major uh conflict of interest um and along the way here something that i forgot to include is that yes the watts did come out um the watts did come out uh and say uh you know what She's a con. We didn't know that we were signing up to be the um, the board members for a nonprofit. Um, they said that they were contacting, they had contacted law, uh, law enforcement and, uh, you know, blah, 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 blah. So they did come out and call her a con. And so that's one of the reasons why she has said, you know, in some of these clips, she's going to go after them as well. She's going to uh, sue the Watts for defamation as well. So that's another reason she can be mad at me is because I'm the one that broke, you know, quote unquote, broke that news after John Paul tried to ask her in a ch in her own chat. Um, hey, I've been told this by uh, um, the Watts or something. I forget how it was exactly was worded, but he wanted to get her response. And she just basically told him, fuck, fuck off with your limp dick, basically. So, you know, so the Watts have come out by this time and said, she, she's a, she's a con. Um, and she's obviously doing a conflict of interest while trying to represent herself here. And she's well aware of these conflicts because before she sued me, she asked her friends and her mods if they could join her board because she needed new board members to be able to sue me. All right. She never did it, of course. So um, here's Lana telling on her scamming self. You guys would believe anything. I could probably orchestrate one of the most successful scams and have it going and going and going for years. And you guys probably would never catch on. Did you get that? Did you get that? You guys would believe anything. I could probably orchestrate one of the most successful scams and have it going and going and going for years. And you guys probably would never catch on. There you have it. Did you catch on? I think we caught on. Yeah, I think you're right, Anona Mouse. We caught on. Sorry. The people you were talking to, maybe that applied to them, but not to me. She tried to contact me to have a call. After, and after a brief written exchange, I end the conversation with a uh, fuck dot you dot. So she posts it on her community posts and says, oh, my God, Lynn, watch your mouth. But hey, I'm still up for a convo. And then she, and then below that, she writes, is this an invitation? Sorry but I'm currently taken at the moment. So of course, of course she has to go that route, right? So what happens next? Then um, 
here's Lana on an unhinged rant against a lot of people, including me. Are you guys fucking sick? Like, this isn't fucking writing. So you tell me what district attorney is going to look the other way. Because no district attorney is going to look the other way. You think that I'm just going to lay on my back and get fucked by you people? Because you have another thing coming. No, that's not what's going to happen. What has had to happen is I've had to take God knows how much time out of my fucking life. I've had to work so fucking hard. You're disgusting. And you know what? Red Kins said it best. Where are you at? Why aren't you outraged over this shit? Because I can tell you this. If somebody did this to you and your fucking family, I'd be outraged. Where the fuck are all you people that fucking run your fucking cocksuckers? Nowhere to be found. Because you an owned bitch. Because you don't want no problems with who? Who are you so fucking afraid of? Is it Lana? Like you fucking said once on a panel, you sick pig? You know that I didn't do any of this shit. All of you people that have channels know that I haven't done any of this shit. And what do you guys do? You don't say a fucking word. You let these fucking clip bit tit tits little channels talk all their fucking nonsense. Or what you do is you go when you start these quote unquote um, channels. I'm going to be anonymous. I'm going to be anonymous. Yeah, well, you can keep your, you can, you can be anonymous until you start defaming people. Then you, then you can't. <clears throat> you don't want a crime. Yes, punishable by jail time. And I have all the evidence to show that all of you guys have committed and conspired. It doesn't even have to happen. That crime itself is by itself. And all of you guys think that I got my ass kicked in fucking court? Well, you couldn't be more fucking wrong. But I'm not here to tell you what's right, what's wrong, and how to think. You can fucking see it happen for yourself. When you give somebody enough rope, what are they going to do? They're going to fucking hang themselves with it. Uh -huh. That's what they're going to do. You want to have the balls to go up into a fucking open courtroom and commit perjury? Well, by God, let me see it. Okay. And that's what the fuck happened in that courtroom. All right. And it happened at the ex parte before I was ever in, in that courtroom. Right. And I'm allowed to exercise my First Amendment rights. So are we... Go file a defamation claim if you think that I've ever defamed you. But the truth? Oh, that's a legal defense against defamation. Mm-hmm. And you guys running to fucking John Paul? Now that's even, that's even fucking funnier. Because now you're showing that you're trying to okay. go over to PA and to what mess with then Sheldon Jr. Jr., his mom, Jamie, all these people. Because that's how sick you guys are. No, but nobody wants to know the truth. So what do you want to hear? These people have lied. These people behind the scenes have legit tried to separate a mother and, his, and her child. And they're not stopping. I will say, I could be wrong about the date. I could be wrong about the date. Sometimes the date that I have is the date I, um, I so don't take my dates as, uh, you know, biblical or anything like that. So if I have the date wrong, it's possible. It's possible. You got your PPO, right? Well, that wasn't enough. Now we want her arrested for fucking what? For being sexy and a badass bitch? Oh. Yeah, it is post PPO. And was, but was PPO in 2022 or 20? Now I'm mixing up the years. Did the PPO actually get happen in 2023? So I have the year wrong. Apologies for that, if that's what I did. But this is post, it, it definitely, the, the title of it was Viva Nina, though. She was talking, she was, and maybe she was going after Nina because she felt that uh, Nina helped with that. What do you want? You want to make sure that an innocent black man stays in prison? Because you're interfering with, with contractual relationships, business, contractual relationships. You're interfering with that. Yeah, that's what I thought, Vanessa. You know what you're doing. And at the end of the day, you don't give a fuck that it could possibly ruin an innocent man's chances of coming out of fucking prison for something that he didn't do just so long that Lana, that Lana isn't liked on YouTube. Are you out of your fucking mind? And all the evidence points to that. I had Teresa Stephens as a rebuttal witness for me lined up for Denver. My reputation, my life has suffered immensely because of the lies that continue to go on. That would be because of your lies, Lana. Because of your lies, the lies that you tell people and can't follow through with. So here she is admitting that the only reason she retaliated on me was because I criticized her nonprofit. And it's like, 
everything that you could say, it's because you came to me in some type of way and wrote me something to be a jackass about the nonprofit, about this shit. She created an alt and acted like she became a member. It was what? Yeah, she created an alt and became um, a member of Fight for a Family. It just like that stuff like that. Like you, so you you joined for poor intentions. Like to, to oh what? my goodness, I, I I have not scammed any of you oh. people. I don't even know you. If you don't think I'm right, if you don't have to join a nonprofit, you don't have to donate your money to anybody that you don't want to donate your money to. You know what I'm saying? Like so to say, I I came here and I sold a. a you know, a broken vacuum to everybody. And they're like, oh my God, Lana, like you fucking said that this vacuum's going to make our world go round. Okay. Be, <laughs> be, be pissed. No. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Like, it mm. doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Jamie, she started with these accusations when she came here. Well, yeah, she docks my dad. She made a video with my dad in it. <laughs> she said my, you know, because I was like, yeah, my dad's part of the mafia. Like, that's me being funny. Yeah, my dad's moffed up. You might want to leave him alone. My dad's the best. My dad's a great, I mean. <laughs> that's so funny. My dad's moffed up. She wasn't smiling when she said that, baby. No, 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 no. So then she, um tries to subpoena me publicly through v uh, subpoena me via community post. She uses a disc image as an implicit threat about my involvement in the last four minutes. I've told the last four minutes story um, in other places. I'm not going to tell it here. It's just that she thought that it was judicial misconduct. She tried to use it for an appeal. She was wrong, of course. So, but she's trying to threaten me with it right here. So I tell her publicly, no, <laughs> sorry. And then, um, and then when we had that private email exchange, she responded to me publicly and just basically laid out a bunch of um, accusations against me. The thing, same things you've been hearing, all the same bullshit, all the same bullshit. But, you know, none of this is working. I'm still going to be covering the way she tragedy pimps cases. I do cover that on my channel. I say a lot of things on my channel. As I'm doing research, I come across this. And this is a what the fuck moment. What did I just hear? Listen to this, you guys. The best team name I ever came across in all my years was uh, Chris, Chris, Han Han Chris Hansen is a cock block. <laughs> that was their team name. And so on the mic, I'm like, have to, Chris Hansen is a cock block. Can you come up here with your team? Like, with your one of her favorite names in all of the trivia tournaments she has run. One of her very favorite names is Chris Hansen is a cock block. Think about the implications of that. Think about the implications of that. What does Chris Hansen represent? He goes after predators, right? Yes, it is the same person, Teresa. Yeah. Yeah, that was her two name, Chris Hansen. There's more. That is amazing. I was like dying. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> and you had to say it? Well, yeah, because like when you're announcing like scores and, um, you know, Chris Hansen uh, is a cock block taking the lead after round three. Coming up from behind, Chris Hansen is a cock block in third now. In third place. Yeah. The cock blockers. Yeah. Oh, but uh, there was, you know, um, my couch pulls out, but I don't. I the, People would come up with their wild, stupid, crazy names. But that was by far, like, one of my favorite team names of you know all the years what was your worst uh, period blood vampires that's ironic isn't that yeah that was the worst i said wait excuse me well because how they were filling out their team name it was like the three initials um ppv yeah and i and i was like i, I kept when i was saying it 
it sounded like I was saying HPV. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, what does this stand for? Because I want to say that it sounded like HPV every time. I was like, PV, I was just like, what's your name? And they're like, no way, you'll never say it. And I'm like, well, I keep saying HPV over here. So I'm going to need you to tell me. Um, and we started laughing over it. Uh, and I was like, is it like, I, I, I think it wasn't, it's not a name. And they're like, oh no, but you can go ahead and say it, period blood vampires. I said, what? <laughs> that was the worst though. There wasn't, I mean, like that's kind of, okay. Yeah. Do I need to, it, I don't know, Mittens. I was starting to suspect that. That is the type of thing Lana would do. Right. So. So then, um, so the court a, a, a couple weeks before this, so almost a year has passed since she has actually over a year has passed since she has filed suit against me. Right. She hasn't shown up for any court dates. She hasn't perfected service on me. Nothing's happening. She hasn't shown up for any of her court dates whatsoever. So the court posts a uh, order that says uh, order to show costs. And it's basically saying, Hey, uh, knock, knock you who filed a lawsuit with us under indigent status, meaning that you're asking the taxpayers to front the bill for you filing this lawsuit. Um, what's going on here? You need to show costs. So she files this piece of paper after the deadline. They ask her to turn it in by a certain date. She turns it in like 24 hours later. All right. And it's called uh, request for non-dismissal. I'm sorry, but there's no such thing. Oh, you just heard your neighbor. Yeah. Sorry. Hope you're okay. It might be better sounding than Lana's voice though. So anyway, just kidding. So, um, I don't, uh, ew. Oh God. Oh, Lala. I do remember that. I remember that. That's gross. It's fucking gross. So anyway, I don't think there is any term in the legal uh, language that's called request for non-dismissal. So she just, she just uh, files this ridiculous pro se filing that says, I don't want you to dismiss my case. And then she just basically rehashes all the things that she has claimed against me without any proof whatsoever. So then on January 18th, um, the court files this uh, entry of dismissal. And it says, it says plaintiff failed to appear for both the November 7th pre uh, final pretrial conference and the November 21st, 22 trial. Um, plaintiff, uh, let's see, on December 13th, plaintiff files a response to court to show cause order. Plaintiff merely recites the purported merits of her case, but does not demonstrate why she failed to attend the critical hearing dates as provided on the case schedule because they had asked her tell us why you didn't appear what's going on we put we put a we put up the bill for you bitch and we also put up a schedule and you didn't show up what kind of respect is that you're telling us that you need remedy you have a one million dollar remedy uh against this person and you're not even going to show up And the, the same thing, the same thing happened with uh, Jays for Justice's lawsuit just a little bit later. So um, this is my video where I just go through and, and say, eh, it was, uh, it was dismissed. Ha ha ha. And then Lana just, you know, basically at this point, at this point, when my case is dismissed, her case is dismissed, her case is dismissed by the courts. Um her case against me is dismissed by the courts. My case against her uh, is dismissed by me. We're no longer in litigation. So I'm going to continue covering the, the ways that she tragedy pimps and perbs cases that provokes a response in her sometimes. Right. 
So here, uh, here she is doing a rant. It's, you know, not specifically provoked. She's just now she's just provoked by the fact that I exist at this point. Okay. So this is all, this is Checkmate Humanity. He used to have a channel called Insomnia and True Crime. She's, I, I don't know. I think she wants me to have her baby. I can't birth her baby. Attack the argument, not the person. Somebody does something, attack the argument, not the person. No, I just, I saw some stuff I didn't like. I saw a bunch of you guys getting tagged in this bullshit with that crazy lady from Checkmate Humanity, uh, who, by the way, she has my record wrong. Um, I beat her in California, so she needs to give me another win. Um, and if, if you want to call this a loss, <laughs> then you can call it a loss. Uh, but it's my life. It's not a game, honey. Uh, you treat it like a game. So, um, you know, I won't play this other unprovoked rant, but she's always doing unprovoked rants and she's always bringing up the wedding shit. Um, she's telling people here that she shut down the website from provoke, from preventing people from um, joining and making false claims. Right. Um, here is the first time she's really even trying to say to the public, uh, answer the public outcries and requests for any kind of information about her, uh, about her nonprofit financials. And I'm pretty sure that this was in response to me being on queen B's panel talking about the nonprofit. Cause not uh, queen B had independently started doing a stream about Lana and Lana and oh, queen B has open panels. So I went up there and I educated them a little bit about the background on Lana. Okay. And I think that this was a response to that. That's what I think. So so then I, you know, this was probably a very provocative video for her. Oh, thank you so much, Miss Brazy. Thank you very, very, very much. Uh, on August 30th, I uh, posted this video. And honestly, I posted it because I was outraged. I was outraged at how she was stalking people in the Idaho 4 case in plain sight. I mean, literally just picking apart these people's lives outright, outright coming. Um, again, Ms. Brazy, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just can't thank everybody who super chats a lot e enough. I really appreciate that. Um, so she's going after the, the victims. She's going after everybody around them. People, a, a mother complained about her daughter being doxxed in a video by Lana. I made this video. Okay. And then in between me uh, making this video, in between me posting this video um, and actually, actually, I'm sorry, creating it and publishing it, she also did an even more creepy stalker video, which was, which I wasn't able to talk about in this particular video that I posted, but she posted the body cam footage of the inside of an entire sorority house right what anonymous lucy is saying here so i posted this stalker video and then she independently completely without knowing i did this video posted also that body cam video and so rightfully so the families the sorority sisters and the people they started to contact her and say hey look you're posting the inside of my freaking house well this is this is where she um, did the most in earning her tragedy per strikes. Because what she does with this is she turns it into, she turns it into, I caused all of those families to contact her, or I am actually the person contacting her between alts, alts that say that they're from the sorority. So that was me. I'm doing that. Um, and because I'm such a crazy person and because I, uh, they need to know who I am. She replays my entire podcast interview from 2015 again, under the guise of, under the guise of, oh, this, um, this is the person you're dealing with. This is the woman who had, who contacted the sororities and told them that I was stalking them. Sorry, no. They independently saw that you were stalking them and they contacted you and they wanted you to stop 
and you turned it into um into straight up defamation against me and also using my tragedy against me and putting this all under the Idaho four name. That is sick. There's nothing sicker than that. Making an Idaho four video, inviting everybody in to talk about the Idaho four and then to talk about this bullshit gripe that you have against me to to retaliate in such a way about the fact that you are the one stalking these people and they're reacting to you, right? So it's now my fault. And now everybody needs to think that I put them up to it. And you're going to use my childhood sex abuse and my mental illness to drive home why that's so. So that's what she did. And she does it all over again. I'm not going to show everything. I'm just going to show, I, I cut it down to the most pertinent. Part. My daughter currently lives at the KKK, KKG house at the University of Idaho. We are very disturbed that you broadcasted a video of touring of their private residence, including full facial, not blurred video images of the girls. So she's reading these emails. She's She's gotten these private messages from people saying, please stop, please stop posting the, our, uh, our kids home. And now she's bringing these messages out private and she's blaming it all on me and saying that I might've even written them. You have violated their privacy and have put all of those girls in danger. How would you feel if someone broadcasted a video tour of the inside of your home, detailing all the entrances, exits, dark corners, and bedrooms? Shame on you for the danger you put them in. We have engaged legal counsel in the interest of protecting their privacy and preventing them from being victimized. We are also in contact with Moscow Police Department's in-house legal counsel. If those girls are violated in any way by an intruder or predator, we will consider you as a contributor to their victimization. Dear sons, actually, we were concerned with the safety of your daughters and have been bringing awareness to the treatment that females receive versus males on University of Idaho's campus. We believe the females are treated differently than the males, which in my opinion is not okay. The FOIA request, which is legal, came from Moscow Police Department. All my children. So she does respond to these people as if they're real people, and then she starts making it a gender issue, or she makes it a parenting issue. She makes it all their fault. What it does is ensure that government officials are being held accountable while they are working on the taxpayer police department records department on why they wouldn't redact such info. So there's more you know, you know, she's such info that you're requesting. As I'm so she's shaming the police department. She's shaming the parents. It's everybody else's fault. She didn't do anything. <sighs> Curious to the response. I believe it was a... It does not take a rocket scientist to conclude how this violation of privacy would cause undue... Even when I made a video to incite hate for them to come to, to, to me. Um, and I said, take it up with Moscow Peace Department. I'll be happy to do the right thing out of the human decency that I am. Um, but coming at me, threatening, like just acting like a bitch, continuing to talk about my family and I. You are so fucking miserable that you try to make other people's lives like your own. And you know what? Weak people would run because that's what they do. I'm not weak and I'm not running. In fact, I'm going to end your term on YouTube. And I'm going to do it with class and with grace and with facts. And the favor that you pulled at Google, it's all traceable, sweetheart. It's against company policy. So that person that helped you out. Tisk, tisk. Muted. Damn it. Muted. <laughs> and that's God's sake. Lana, don't say it. <laughs> Anyways, this woman went to the police and told the police that I have mental illness. And then I fuck her KKK meetings. No, guys, it fucking kills her that I have 40,000 subs. Fucking kills her. To the point that she said, no, guys, it's okay. It's okay. Calm down. That's how she does her rallies, her KKK meetings. No, guys, it's okay. Do KKK Atlanta's just going to show her ass now in front of way more people. And we're going to be able to cultivate them. And now we're really going to be able to get her. We're going to be able to get her good. We need to set me up. Try, try to set me up. No, it's okay. Like, oh, my God, Lana's channel keeps saying, come on, guys. we got to do something. we got to start calling Scott Roeder. And he can't go on with Lana. we got to infiltrate her viewership. 
Why do you guys think all their shit has hashtag Lana Oriani, hashtag to the transparency, hashtag fight for family? Everything these people do, she they're the like ones prolific that are hashtag. When you come in, you have to follow my shit. You gotta see all their shit because they fucking ride my jock strap. Like it's gold. Like it's got a hundred thousand dollars. And each time you get on it, you get like a little piece of the pie. Right. Like it was insanity. So the last thing let me tell you. Her, my mom threw me in that rehab. She she threw me in when I was 18 because I was out of control. Let me tell you. I had been a I just want to note that, oh, thank you, Rando Carlissian. Carl Rissian. Carl Rissian. Carl Rissian. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know how to say Carl Rissian because I used to work at Lucasfilm. Thank you very much. Um, note she is she was uh, eating ice cream now because at this point um, I have said that I used to eat an entire tub of ice cream when I was uh, <laughs> I've actually you know I had it I've had eating disorders all my life. So, you know, tub of ice cream, that's part of the eating disorder. So she went and grabbed a tub of ice cream and started eating. Rested a couple times, one time for murder. <laughs> I didn't do it, but I was with a guy in a car who had murdered somebody with, for that car and came and picked me and my friends up, was driving around with us, and then we all got we all got picked up. And uh, Did you call it the murder mobile? <laughs> <laughs> It was an Oldsmobile. It was a 1968 Dodge Murder Mobile. It was a 1988 Oldsmobile cut the Supreme. It was a nice car. It was white with leather interior. She just said that she got arrested for murder. You guys understand what I'm saying here? Wait, what? I said, excuse me? What? Gone through a trauma, you know? Yes, I did. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Sparkles. Thank you very much. And I appreciate the kind words in here very much. I it, it, Just everyone being here is quite enough. But I everything else is icing on the cake. So thank you very, very much. Woo woo. All right. So here she gets to laugh a little bit more at my, um, <laughs> at my childhood their parents split up their mother is mentally ill you know like i cry like i have volatile moods like they go through stuff but wait, that's it and i had a breast reduction because my my boobs were really really lopsided and big and men always looked at them and it made me sick i, I just couldn't like it was just so when i was like 20 my mom, i was complaining about it my mom said if you want it's like a moment to reflect because it's a lot yeah this was two years ago um first of all why are people laughing um, asking Matt about it. Because if you were to see this on, like, I don't know, Oprah, Dr. Phil, the audience would have tissues crying. They're laughing. Explain that psyche for me. Go ahead. If her mom is so strong, why didn't she go to her mom and tell her mom about the babysitter that was bumping uglies and tell her mom to do something about it? Um, she does, She denies victim blaming. And that was also her trying to debunk that it actually happened. So, um, yeah, fuck you. Why are you laughing about uh, at weird times? Like, this is so serious. And this woman called in a favor uh, back a year or two ago to get one of my videos taken down. That's against terms of service. You can't just call in your favors because you know Google people and people that you've worked with, and she admits it. Someone's a fucking deranged, obsessed fuck. The effect, you know, the, the, the effect that it was having on me and my life and my loved ones. And, and I'm going to end this. Um, and the purpose of this is not to believe me if you're going to go over there and say anything to this woman that's not the purpose of this and in fact i don't allow that and if i see that i block people it's really funny she said that because after this video and during this video people swarmed my comment section they swarmed it from her channel more than i've i've seen in a long time um so she, even if she said don't go don't go send her hate. Um, they were sure inspired to based on absolute lies. Lies. The video was taken down where she broadcast someone's nudes. And I showed and I proved why that was done. But she also um, claims that that never happened. Okay. Um, this is to put out the facts of when you want to listen to what someone's saying, that's fine. Consider the source. Um, this person has not changed at all. This person has an agenda. And if she would maybe channel her fucking life to help people, maybe that she could, you know, come out some type of way. Um, but that's not happening. 
uh, this woman has a fixation on, on me and it's unhealthy, uh, but she, they also fixate on all of you guys. And so please um, do not go over to her channel. Okay, that's not what this for. She's fixated on you guys. She's coming after you. She's watching you. Just watch out. Okay. Okay. Um, this is for the truth. <laughs> this is for, you want to see the other side? Here. And the only reason I did it is because she contacted 18, 19, 20, and 21 year olds when she contacted the sororities at Moscow, Idaho. Did you hear that? She says I contacted 18, 19, 20, 20 year olds. No, I didn't. And she's using that as a basis to do, to rebroadcast this entire live, uh, entire podcast, which she's rebroadcasted before now three times. Okay. That's the only reason this is case related. Otherwise I wouldn't be fucking saying any of this, but I went ahead and I, I'm probably this live and I'll go ahead and I will share it with a blast on my community page. If you want to see the whole thing. Um, so please, I love you all. Um, you guys are amazing. After I questioned the validity of fight for a family's nonprofit status and it's dishonest marketing tactics. And now she's actually going to go through and read parts of my complaint about her and listen to her reaction. Listen to her reaction and thank the kind words, everybody. I'm okay. I've grown a skin around this. It's still difficult to hear, but um, it's, uh, worth sharing with all of you so you can avoid people like this in the future. I'm in April of 2021, in a comment to plaintiff, defendant Oriani's channel, she said as follows, quote unquote, like I said, you came over here sniffing my panties after saying in a video that using the word panties in a sexual term towards plaintiff triggers flashbacks. <laughs> this is not real. This is not real. That's how she sees it. It's after not real. No, it's the real. Used the words panties to trigger my childhood sexual abuse. Defendant Oriani began overtly using the word panties to trigger her. In videos on defendant's channel, she searched for songs with the word panties in their lyrics. <laughs> Let me fill you up in quotes and ask for plaintiff's address in person. <laughs> and ask for plaintiff's address and birthday so she can send her a bite. August of 2021, defendant Oriani falsely claimed in several videos that, <laughs> that plaintiff and her were engaged, <laughs> engaged to get married and promoted a bachelor weekend in Florida. <laughs> Hold on. Breathe, Anna. A bachelor weekend in Florida for which she collected funds with cash. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. Next. Oh God. In other videos, defendant Oriani has disclosed plaintiff's full name, which is not published anywhere online. Yeah, it is. It's really Because of you. Oh God. Mischaracterized plaintiff's relationship with her children and falsely claimed the plaintiff murdered her jobs. <laughs> On August 3rd, 2021 defendant Oriani aired a 2015 podcast interview about plaintiff's mental illness and childhood sexual abuse and stopped the audio to make cool, disparaging, or defamatory remarks about her role in the abuse and resulting mental illness. The fuck? Oh, plaintiff has repeatedly asked defendant Oriani to stop harassing and defaming her and referring to her as sexual property. Oh my God. <laughs> However, what? Oh my God, you must have said this. However, on or about December 31st, 2021, defendant Oriani stated on another YouTube channel that she would like to use duct tape on plaintiff and give her the right of her life. I just can't. I just can't. I just can't with this shit. She's even shocked, so shocked by her own behavior that she can't keep on reading. She, yeah, it still is up. It has 24,000 views and it has all kinds of shitty comments under it about how what a horrible person I am. Sure is. It's still there. For all the world to see. Whatever. It's okay. 
I know. <laughs> uh, I don't value the opinions of anybody who takes that as uh, as a serious thing. But then, you know, November 14th rolls around. November 14th rolls around and the state of Ohio sees fit to cancel, cancel, cancel by her family. And so I finally got some, you know, valid official validation that I'm right. And I was right all along. So neener, neener, neener. Okay. And I post the announcement and I point out that she's still, still, and still to this day, because I've checked it to this day, um, offering a fight for a family donation on her channel, which probably shouldn't be mixed with her nonprofit anyway. Then I streamed two of Lana's uh, CPO hearings on disorder of the court, and she responds with textbook defamation per se and doxing, then creates a diversion by blaming Alex Erickson for calling the Moscow police on her. And even in the face of indisputable proof that Alex Erickson didn't do it, she still will not back down from that. Okay? That's how she operates. Yes, her subscribers love this shit. They eat it up and they come over to my channel and they're like, you're terrible. You're jealous. You're obsessed. <laughs> so I'm just going to, you know, link to this video for the next time. So this is the, this is the post that she wrote to me, you guys. This is the post that she wrote to me in response to me streaming her um, hearing against Melissa Jade. Do you see all the red marks? Those are all the times that she made sure that she said my full entire government name. And she's like, oh, the, your, your name is right here in this podcast that I just aired. Nope. Nope. She, um, my first name, Lynn is my middle name. My first name was not available anywhere on the internet until she and other people started using it liberally. Okay. But that doesn't mean I'm going to just allow it, you know, just, I'm going to do it to myself when I don't want to be known that way on here. And I also don't go around going, she docks me, she docks me, she docks me. I don't want to point out that I've been doxxed. That's fucking dumb. Right? But I'm just pointing out that she has a major issue with, quote, unquote, quote her dad being doxxed. Could, I bet you... Hardly any of you. And I don't want you to say her dad's name in my chat. I don't want you to say her da dad's name in my chat. But heart, I would bet 1% of you might know the name of her dad. I don't want, but you, if you've watched her channel, you know my full name full well. Right? So, and in this particular post, she accuses me also. She, she had already been on a friend's channel where this friend accused me and pulled up a bogus record and said that I uh, was arrested for domestic violence in 1998, which is a complete and utter lie, complete lie. And uh, that's actual defamation per se, because you have specific named a very specific crime in a very specific place and time that I did not commit and she knew it because she knew that the name that she was using did not match with my full real name. Okay. But here she is in reaction to my, po to, to my airing her stream. Hey, she has a reaction to me airing, uh, me streaming her hearing. That's fine. She wants to dispute the facts. That's fine. But to come out here and say things like, you beat the snot out of your ex-husband. You, oh, P.S. Also, not forget, you beat the snot out of your ex-husband while on sp spring break-ish vacation in Daytona Beach. He must have been really cruising for a bruising. What the fuck? I even, I, I even missed some doxes here of my own name. So it happens all the time. I, I miss other people's doxes sometimes. 
and I miss my docs. She's the one that puts them out. We have to keep cleaning up her fucking doxing messes. Okay. That's her. And then what happened the other day? This happened two days ago. An hour after I announced this live on my community post, one of my family members was called by someone who said they were from a Mexican cartel and I was in trouble. Do you hear that? One of my family members was contacted and told that a Mexican cartel had me and I was in trouble. Yes, not just a cartel, a Mexican cartel. Like she had to make it, you know, a very specific, not she, whoever it was, whoever it was, called my family member and said that I was in trouble. They needed to get me out of trouble. Now, this was one of two things, right? Just a mom, thank you very, very much for the super chat. You ask, has anyone ever actually managed to stop her? Some people must have been terrified of her. Thank you for being brave enough to try to help smile. So, um, here's the issue. She won't stop until she doesn't have a platform, a channel. That's it. Even, even if she's arrested and she has been, you know, technically arrested and is out on bond for telecommunications harassment and revenge porn on another YouTuber. And she's doing court in 17 days. Okay. Doing court for her trial for criminal charges in Ohio for the things that she's accusing everybody else of doing, right? Um, even if, even after that, she still has a platform and the algorithm is still going to send her um, traffic and views because that's what the algorithm likes. It likes attention. And it doesn't matter if you, if you hurt people to get that attention. And she also loves hurting people she loves hurting people. So that works out really well for her. You mean to tell me I can make shit up on the internet? I can actually hurt people and make money? Wow. I mean, no wonder she loves this job so much. She finally figured out she gets to hurt people on the internet and make money doing it. And YouTube, they're right along with her. They're doing it for her. Okay. So the only way that she is stopped is if she does not have, if she does not, <clears throat> if she does not have a platform and that's not up to me, I don't have any control over her not having a platform. And I worked at Google and I have friends at Google. It's not within my power to take away, to yank away her platform. It's in their power. But as long as she's making money for them, why would they take her platform? Why? Only if they are publicly embarrassed by the fact that she has a platform. Only if they are publicly shocked about the fact that she's using their platform as a fucking tragedy perving weapon. Okay? So... Um, whoever, I don't know if the person who contacted my family members from YouTube, I have no idea, really don't know. It could have been some sort of scam, right? But here's the thing. No money was, no money was exchanged any hands. They, you know, there was a pretty abrupt hang up. So if, if, um, that call was from somebody from YouTube. I have a message for you. Okay. I have a message for you. Grow the fuck up. 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 If, if you 
are resorting to contacting family members of people you do not like to try to get them to shut up. You do not belong on YouTube making money. YouTube is not the place for you because if you think that you're going to be able to get some sort of relief out of suing people or going after people um, who criticize you on the internet, you're in for a long and miserable haul. Grow the fuck up. This is the internet. People will have poopy criticisms about you. You do not get to retaliate for three years against somebody who has a poopy opinion of you. And guess what? I think there are a lot of people who have who have a poopy opinion of you. There's a lot of people who have a poopy opinion of me walking around out there. It's just that on the internet, we get to hear about those poopy opinions. So then we get to get our feelings hurt and decide how we're going to deal with that. If we put ourselves on the internet, we need to learn how to deal with people's criticisms. Okay? All of us. Grow the fuck up. 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 Okay? Bill Nye, the science guy, he says it. So let's just really quickly review all the accusations against me. All right. These are all the accusations that have been lobbied against me by her. And I probably have missed some. All right. I contacted the Ohio AG's office. I contacted Fight for Family Families. I contacted Beaver County Housing Authority. I started researching land in 2021, January 2021. I And before that, I contacted Idaho Four Families. I contacted the sorority house was arrested for domestic violence, i.e. beating the snot out of my ex-husband in Daytona Beach in 1998. That is textbook defamation per se. That I was involved in ta Operation Take Down Lana and that I was on the sex scandal panel. All of that I dispute and has been debunked authoritatively right here in these two streams. Those are the answers to your questions. If these accusations continue to come up, you know my answer to them. But if they keep coming up out of Lana's mouth, you know that she she's delusional and she won't keep listening. She, she's not going to listen. She's not going to change, right? So these will still keep coming out of her mouth. But even in the face of facts, she doesn't change. She doesn't change her mode. Is that the kind of person you want to follow in true crime? That's the kind of person you're going to take what they say in true crime? Or you think even deserves any attention whatsoever? Who would lie like this over time so many times? who would take a person's tragedy and pervert it like she does with true crime cases and with people's childhood fucking sex abuse. That's who you want to give your support to your attention to your click to. Don't answer the question to me, answer the question to yourself. And for the rest of you who haven't figured it out yet, when you're on the internet, people are going to be critical of you. You're going to find out what people think of you. Grow the fuck up. Grow the fuck up. Grow the fuck up. Grow the fuck up. Okay. All right. So that is my presentation, everyone. That's my presentation. Um, I really, really appreciate you all being here. I appreciate the cash apps. I appreciate the um, PayPal's. I appreciate the supportive comments. I think you're all great. Um, I appreciate that you have been respectful in chat. And, um, you know, onward and upward, right? I don't feel like I need to rehash my story with Lana ever again. Unless, unless she does something over the top that I need to report on. But I won't. Um, so... There you have it.
and I, I did work hard on this because it's important for me to get the story straight. I learned a lot of things. I learned, I, I learned that my face was in her content a lot more than I thought it was in Easter eggs. I learned that she uh, threatened with a cap gun. <laughs> I learned, I learned a lot of things, learned a lot of things. I hope you learned something too. Um, please be careful with yourselves out there. Um, keep your, information anonymous don't use your real names in chats on youtube um, don't use the same names that you use on facebook or in other social media sites if you want to stay private um people like lana will rope you in they will suck you they'll hoover you in with their love bombing and then they will spit you the fuck back out and you won't know what hit you ask anyone ask anyone so Thanks again. We're just about three hours and 20 minutes. I was going to try to keep this, you know, kind of close to three hours and that would make this entire total story about nine hours. <laughs> all righty. <sighs> Thank you all very much. And, um, be kind, be kind. And also do not send hate to anybody that was mentioned today. Love you all. Good night.